the fourth hearing of the Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality on PS Resolution 131 is now called to order. At the outset, the Committee on Women and Children had a simple objective. Get to the bottom of the rising cases of pogo-related prostitution and human trafficking. Ngunit, habang lumalalim ang investigasyon, madami ang nauungkat. Nagtiwala sa atin ang mga witness at whistleblower na ibahagi ang kanilang mga nalalaman. Lumalabas ang iba't ibang mga pangalan at ang pagkasangkot ng iba't ibang mga opisyal ng pamahalaan. This committee will let the axe fall where it may. And amidst it all, it will be guided by its mandate to protect women and children, particularly those in vulnerable circumstances. If you profit from the abuse of women and children, if you allow our borders to be penetrated by those who hurt women and children, no matter who you are, nor how powerful you are, that axe will fall on you. Alang-alang sa mga kababaihan at bata, hahayaan kong mahulog yun sa inyo. Hindi ko na po patatagalin because we have a lot to cover. I call on the committee secretary to enumerate the names of our resource persons, including those this, the committee has subpoenaed, to state the status of the subpoenas of those who are not here and to administer the oath to those who are here for the first time. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for the record, you'd like to acknowledge our resource persons. Uh, for the Department of Justice, we have Attorney Yvette Coronel, OIC Executive Director, Interagency Council Against Trafficking. For the Department of Tourism, we have Director Rowena Montesilio, Office of Industry, Manpower Development, and Attorney Ryan Oliva. For the National Bureau of Investigation, we have Attorney Janet Francisco, Chief, Anti-Human Trafficking Division, Attorney Emeterio Dungalio, Junior, Chief, Special Action Unit, Attorney Joel Tobera, Chief, Anti-Organized and Transnational Crime Division, Attorney Irvin Garcia, Chief, Anti-Fraud Division, for the Bureau of Immigration, we have uh, Deputy Commissioner Tobias Javier, Mr. E.R. Herman Robin, President Immigration Officers Association of the Philippines, Mr. Fortunato S. Manahan, Intelligence Division, Mr. Grifton Medina, Port Operations Division, Attorney Arvin Santos, Head Legal Division, Attorney Ruben Casibang, Jr., Deportation, uh, we have Mr. Allison Chong, uh, um, our witness from the Immigration Officer 1. Um, and then we also have Mr. Dion Carlo Albao, Daniel Binsol, Mr. Abdul Fahad Kalaka, Mr. Glenn Ford S. Comia, Mr. Danilo Theodore, Mr. Gabriel Ernest Estacio, Mr. Ralph Ryan Garcia, Mr. Benlando Guevara, Mr. Anthony Lopez, Mr. Rodolfo Magbujos, Ms. Dimple Mayumi Maliari, Mr. Mark Red Marinas, Mr. Fidel S. Mendoza, Chevy Chase Nanyong, Cecil Jonathan Orozco, Mr. Erwin Ortanez, Mr. Francis Dennis Robles, Mr. Bradford Allen So, Mr. Paul Villanueva. We also have uh, Mr. Ramon Tulfo, columnist, The Manila Times. Ms. Leah Wu uh, from the Empire International Travel and Tours. And together with her is Attorney Benjamin Kalau. Uh, Madam Chair, for the record, um, Sabina, we're also... Uh, sent to uh, Mr. Paul Eric Borja. And Ms. Honey Yao. But they were unable to attend. What is the status of the subpoenas for Mr. Borja and Ms. Yao? Uh,
So please just uh, make it of record that uh, hindi na pinasabi na si Mr. Borja dahil out of town sila ngayon. And hindi muna pinasabi na for this hearing. And uh, si Ms. Yao ay nasa luma na yung address na meron ng committee. So let's please update that. Comsec. And also make it of record that uh, Mr. Maynardo Marinas uh, is not present today. So, Comsec, please administer the oath dun sa mga resource persons na ngayon pala mga nandirito. Uh, we'd like to request our resource persons who have not taken their oath to please stand and raise your right hand. Mr. Tulfo, if you would also please yes, and also take the from oath. the Department of Tourism. Yes, please. Uh, please raise your hand. Um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee? Madam Chair, for the record, all our resource persons answered in the affirmative. Thank you, Comsec, and to our resource persons. Mapu na putayang lahat. So I'd like to uh, first address additional questions uh, to our uh, resource person, whistleblower, and witness Mr. Allison, Alex Chong. Mr. Chong, noong huling hearing, nabanggit uh, nyo ang maraming pangalan ng mga taong sangkot sa Pastilla scam at ang ilan sa kanila ay nandirito ngayon. Um, I want to ask you now to take a look at them and confirm if these are the persons you identified. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Pinaninidigan mo ba yung mga statements na iminigay mo noong huling hearing natin? Yes, Your Honor. Meron ka bang idadagdag pa, Mr. Chong, sa testimony na ibinigay nyo so far? Sa ngayon po, Your Honor, wala pa. Pero matatanong naman po mamaya. Alright, in that case, uh, Mr. Marinas, gusto ko pong magsimula sa inyo. Uh, dahil kayo nga po yung former POD chief, at kayo po yung inidentify ni Alex at ng iba ko pang mga sources bilang yung nagko-control sa Pastillas operations. So, ito po yung unang tanong ko sa inyo, and I remind you that you are under oath. Nagsisinungaling ba si Alex Chong? Madam Chair, good morning. Uh, if I may be given a chance, I have a prepared statement for this morning. And I may be given at least about 10 minutes just to um, say my piece before I answer quest your question, Your Honor. You will please answer my question first, and then I will give you time during this hearing to make your statement. Is, Ali is Alison or Alex Chong lying? Nung pong panahon ko, wala pong pastilya scheme na nangyayari, hindi ko po alam ang pastilya scheme na binabanggit ni Mr. Allison Chong. So, ibig nyo pong sabihin, nagsisinungaling si Mr. Chong? Yes, Your Honor. Well, we'll see about that, Mr. Marinas. The evidence will unfold at magiging napaka-interesante po nito. Kinoconfirm nyo naman po na kayo yung dating POD chief uh, bago po si Mr. Grifton Medina, tama po? Yes, Your Honor. So, noon pong kayo ang POD head, uh, Mr. Marinas, Alam niyo po ba ang Pastillas scam? Hindi po, Your Honor. At I've never been heard about the word Pastillas scheme or scam sa Bureau of Immigration. Posible ba, Alex, na hindi alam ni Mr. Marinas yung Pastillas scheme na iyan? Your Honor, napangalanan po yan na Pastillas scheme. So, it could be a jargon but with regards po sa operation kaya nga po na nabanggit ang pangalan ni Mr. Red Marinas ay dahil siya po ang POD chief at that time okay so ang sinasabi ko po dito we are painting a picture here with Mr. Mark Red Marinas as the POD chief and then he installed si, uh, where is he? Mr. Erwin Ortanez 
as the TC, overall TCEU head at that time. And then under naman kay uh, Mr. Erwin Ortanyes is the TCEU head for each terminal. Terminal 1, uh, that so Mr. Would be Mr. Comia. Terminal 2 would be Mr. Guevara at that time. And Terminal 3 would be Mr. Binsol at that time. Being the leader of the TCEU chiefs, kaya po siya nabanggit dito. So, imposible na hindi nila alam yung Pastilla scheme bilang POD head noon at nag-appoint nung tatlong TCEU head sa mga terminals? Imposible po. Um, itatanong ko sana ito kay Commissioner Morente, pero kung maaari kong itanong na lamang kay Deputy Commissioner uh, Javier, di po ba na may na-relieve ng mga TCEU employees precisely because of revelations na sila ay tumatanggap ng pera kapalit niyang easy access papasok at palabas ng bansa? And this, this would be, and I also have questions for them later and for Mr. Ortanyes. This would be Mr. Comia, Binsol, and uh, Guevara. Tama po ba? Uh, good morning, ma'am. Um, are we referring to the three mentioned by the witness? I believe we are referring to the three uh, TCEU heads at the three terminals, uh, Deputy Commissioner. Ma'am, based on our records, they were relieved because uh, there was an investigation conducted by the Bureau of Immigration sometime in the uh, um, first quarter of uh, 2019. And in fact, the result of this in that investigation was forwarded to the National Bureau of Investigation for further investigation. So it, it, it paves the way for the investigation, and it was necessary at the time to relieve the, the the personnel mentioned in order to uh, to allow uh, the NBI and the Bureau to conduct a freehand in the investigation. At yung freehand na investigation na yun ng NBI, Deputy Commissioner, ay ibinigay para mag-investiga sa mga charges na tumatanggap sila ng pera kapalit ng easy access sa bansa. Among the investigation sprouted because of the uh, revelation or the expose made by um, by uh, the columnist uh, Mr. Tulfo. to my right, uh, Mr. Ramon Tulpo. And uh, by reason of that, the uh, Bureau uh, ordered an investigation. Thank you. And I will be asking questions of uh, Mr. Tulfo, who was the first to bring these um, accusations and evidence uh, to public knowledge uh, even last year. Pero mabalik muna ako kay Mr. Marina. So, completely oblivious po ba kayo sa ganitong mga goings on? Yung sinasabi ni Mr. Chong at yung uh, sinalaysay ulit ni Deputy Commissioner Javier na there was actually a BI investigation na nagbunsod pa ng NBI investigation on these charges. Completely oblivious ba kayo doon? Madam Chair, I was asked uh, with a question of if I know about the operation of Pastilla scheme, particularly Pastilla scheme. Uh, I'm not aware of the word Pastillas being used in a, such an operation, Your Honor. It's true na sa lahat po ng institusyon, meron po tayong mga problema. And this is not the only problem that we have, not only the Pastilla scheme. There are a lot of irregularities happening in such an institution. Kaya sinasabi ko po, yung term ng Pastilla Scheme, hindi ko po talaga alam yan. But I would have to admit that ever since I took over in 2016, meron po mga problema na hinaharap ang ating pong institusyon, ng Bureau of Immigration, that we took action in the first four months nung aming pong pagupo. Kaya po, sinasabi ko yung word na Pastillas, hindi ko po naririnig at hindi ko po alam yung scheme na yan. Although I have to admit, may mga problema po kami hinaharap in terms of irregularities and illegal activities, but not as bloated as what is reported last time by our uh, witness, Mr. Chong. Uh, of course, sir. No? Yung pastillas, term lang yan eh, technical term. So, wag po sana natin technicalin sa hearing na ito. Ang tinatanong po natin ay yung very serious allegations ng pag-corrupt sa bureau natin 
na nagbunsod ng investigasyon ng sarili ninyong bureau na nagbunsod pa ng investigasyon ng NBI. And tama kayo, marami pang ibang problema. Yung, yung prostitution, kaugnay ng trafficking, kaugnay ng illegal recruitment, ngayon kaugnay pa ng pag-corrupt sa Bureau of Immigration mismo. Gusto ko pong uh, kilalanin at this point yung pagdating uh, ni Senator uh, Duroy de la Rosa. Salamat po sa inyong um, pagdalo. Sa bagay naman, uh, Mr. Marinas, yung video na pinakita ko two hearings ago, yung si Alex Chong din ang kumuha, that was after your term, correct? Yes, madam. If, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was taken July 2019. So are you saying po na yung mga wrongdoings na yan hindi nangyari nung term mo, ngunit pagkatapos lamang? Madam Chair, if we're referring to the video taken by our witness, if I can be given the chance to expound more on what happened on that video, maybe we can, I can shed some light on the video taken. Can you give your brief point about the video? Kasi bibigyan ko kayo ng oras in this hearing to read your complete 10-minute statement. Pero just particular sa, uh, sa tanong ko, yung nakita po natin sa video, you may share your major observation about it. Pero sinasabi niyo po ba na yung ganyang mga scheme nangyari lamang pagkatapos ng term niyo bilang POD chief? Madam Chair, if we're referring to the video taken by the witness, alam niyo po, wala po akong nakitang irregularity doon bukod sa kumuha ng video uh, which Mr. Chong admitted he himself took the video. He insinuated malice with the intent of discrediting because he did not follow the, uh, uh, did not observe the proper procedure of uh, a primary inspection. Kung makikita po yung video, kaya re-request ko po sana ipakita natin dito. Siya po ang kumukuha ng video sarili niya he did not observe the proper procedure of primary inspection. Pagtanggap niya po ng dokumento, tumayo kagad siya, kasi nasa kanya yung video, pinapakita niya na mayroong corruption nangyayari, which is not, which should not be the case. Hindi po yun ang tamang primary inspection and procedure ng bawat immigration officer. Ano pong walang makakakita ng irregularity sa video na iyon? Eh kahit po ako pag gumabiyahe palabas, umuuwi, dumadaan din sa BI, Hindi naman ako pinapapasok sa back room dahil na-check off yung pangalan ko sa listahan. Tapos hindi naman kahit kung maling travel document man ang dala ko, but of course bilang mamamayan, dala ko lang yung passport ng ating republika. Pero yung nakita po nating mga di umano turista dyan sa video na actually papuntang pagtrabaho sa mga Pogo companies, walang dalang work permit, pero dahil nga dun sa pagbayad ng pastigas bribe money, no questions asked. Red carpet treatment, no VIP uh, treatment. Uh, Mr. Medina, tanungin ko po kayo, sinasabi po ni uh, Mr. Marinas, walang irregular na makakakit, makikita dun sa video na ipinakita kong kuha uh, ni Alex Chong. Ganun din ba yung impression nyo na walang irregular tayong nakita sa video na iyon? Taken as recently as 2019? Um... With, with regard to, you have to put it in context, ma'am. Um, kasi po, may primary inspection, may secondary inspection. Um, with regard to anti-human trafficking, it is uh, precisely the function of the TCEU, the Travel Control Enforcement Unit, to, um, uh, I mean, with regard to anti-human trafficking. Yung kanya po, um, tumayo, um, your primary inspector is not supposed to uh, to stand up. Ang gagawin po niya is i -re refer um, There are several times po na nare-refer po at tumatayo naman po. And then, meron po tayong um, 45 seconds rule dyan sa under ng inter International Civil Aviation Organization. Uh, that is the standard given by the, I the IKO. So, Ang ating immigration officer sa primary inspect, uh, inspection, ibibigay po yung sa secondary inspector who now decides whether there is human trafficking or not. So, uh, yun po yung proper protocol. Yun yung dapat sinusunod at meron po tayong department order dyan ng DOJ na sinusunod natin primary, secondary. Meron pa nga po kaming tertiary 
Ito yung anti-fraud. Kung may matagpuan na um, fake documents or mga travel documents na sasabihin natin uh, are uh, forged or fraudulently acquired, those are going to be referred to our um, anti-fraud. Hindi pa nga human trafficking yung nakikita natin sa video eh. Definitely, it seems to me, may fraud. Kasi ang papasok ay mga Chinese pogo workers, walang dalang work permit, tourist visa lang ang dala. And for the consideration of 10,000 pesos pastillas bribe money, patutuloy yan. Meron pang present na listahan na doon i-check off yung pangalan nila. So, again, hindi ko alam kung anong video yung pinanunood nyo ni Mr. Marinas noon, but it seemed as a lay person sa inyong bureau, highly, highly uh, irregular. May narinig pa po tayong mga um, conversation no, ng mga tao sa video na huwag kayo magpakita ng cellphone. Dinadaga tayo o may nag nakamanman. So the persons conversing sa video, alam nilang may, alam nila may ginagawa silang irregular kasi nililihim nila. Nagbababala sila sa isa't isa na huwag daw tumingin sa cellphone. Nagbababala sila na magmanman sa atin, dinadaga tayo. And I think, I don't know kung ganyan yung behavior ng mga taong observing the problem ni Mr. Tulfo, mga ebidensyang binibigay sa komiteng ito ni, ni Alex Chong. And that cannot be a uh, soft pedal. No? Um, Alex, yung video ba, regular ba yung na-record mo doon? Regular bang protocols at pangyayari iyan? No, Your Honor. Uh, exactly. Bakit ko ni-record yun is para ipakita sa sa buong sambayan ng Pilipino kung ano ang nangyayari sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration. At nakikita naman po natin ngayon. And kung may wrongdoing kahit bago ng term nyo, Mr. Medina, dapat alam ng dating POD chief din, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Yes, dapat alam ng dati, dapat alam ng kasalukuyan. Ang daming open secrets ngayon. So, gawin natin of official record para ganap na mamandato ang BI na tuluyan nang linisin ang, ang sarili niya. Mr. Marinas, mukhang yung mga ebidensyang ilalabas ng aming komite, uh, magkocontradict po sa statement nyo na wala kayong alam dito sa Pastilla Scheme na ito. Incidentally po, sinong SOJ ang nag-appoint sa inyo? I was uh, designated Your Honor in 2016, um, uh, July or August by the former Secretary Justice uh, Vita Aguirre. Former Secretary Aguirre. And uh, so 2016 nga kayo naging POD Chief, month of July. Yes ma'am. Si SOJ, dating SOJ Vitaliano Aguirre, ng Department Circular 041 dated 15th August 2017. This Department Circular grants the POD and the SOCU, yung Special Operations Communications Unit, the power of review, assessment, and preparation of orders on all requests for issuance niyang visa upon arrival o VUA. So, napaka makapangyarihan. Actually, si Commissioner Morente nung nakaraang hearing had to agree kay Senator Aimee nung sinabi ni Senator Aimee na parang naging lame duck tuloy yung uh, commissioner dahil napakaraming kapangyarihan na vest sa POD. Uh, ikaw po yung POD chief nung Department Circular 041 Series of 2017 ay in-issue, di po ba? Yes, Sir Honor. So, wow, no? you were really favored. Incidentally, sino po yung head ng SOCU nung 2017? Your Honor, we have two heads uh, uh, in the uh, SOCO unit. Uh, one is the um, the person processing the documents uh, for the applicants and the the head of the SOCO airport which receives the the documents for the incoming passengers. So do you confirm that the head of the SOCO uh, is your father, Maynardo Marinas? At the main office, Your Honor, yes. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Javier, 
uh, hindi po ba nakakabahala na ganito? Mag-ama po. Mag-ama ang nangangasiwa sa review, assessment, preparation ng visa upon arrival. Um, Ma'am, for the record, uh, I'm not the deputy commissioner in charge of airport operations. But sir, you are the highest ranking yeah. BI official here and in okay. lieu of Commissioner Morente, may I ask you that question? But to the best Di ba nakakabahala yun? I, I can, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I can offer you an answer. Uh, like, uh, um, pag ganyan po, kasi nagre-recommend po kasi, ano, it's, it's going to be approved by the commissioner. So there's a recommendation who is going to be the head of the SOCO in the airport and in the main office. And uh, in fact, uh, the visa upon arrival is uh, ultimately approved by the commissioner upon recommendation of the Special Operations and Communications Unit uh, at the main office. And it's being implemented at the airport through the visa, through the SOCO, uh, which is uh, as mentioned by Mr. Red Marinas, uh, designated for the airport operations. Pero hindi ba nakakabahala? na yung dalawang unit in charge sa pag sa buong VUA instead of the commissioner ay mag-ama mag-ama ang nakaupo diyan hindi pa nakakabahala yon eh sabi nga ni commissioner Morente lame duck sila hindi pa nakakabahala na mag-ama ang nakaupo sa dalawang unit na effectively nirerender na lame duck ang commissioner ng bureau Ma'am, I would say that there would be some kind of uh, um, outside of the norm because uh, there is a uh, father-son tandem, but uh, but if there's no interference or intervention in the actual performance of the work, uh, I think there would be nothing unethical in that uh, particular. Because uh, it so happens only that they are both working in the Bureau of Immigration. Alam nyo, di ba? Outside the norm nga eh. Para mga makaiwas ng impresyon at yung aktual na intervention ay iniiwasan nga natin sa gobyerno dapat yung conflict of interest, di ba? And as the committee report of this committee will show, there was from the outset conflict of interest na isang dahilan na nagbunsod nitong maraming problema ngayon uh, ng ating ng ating mga kababaihan at mga batang na apektuhan itong Pogo operations. Uh, may I ask the, and, and I will, uh, to reiterate, I will allow Mr. Marinas to read your statement in a, in a few minutes. Just one question before I allow that. Ma'am, Mon, from, uh, uh, the, sorry, sorry, the highest ranking person here from the DOJ, I'm sorry, yes, Attorney Coronel, uh, also the executive director of the IACAT. So, thank you so much for your presence, no? Uh, dahil sa susing papel ng IACAT sa pagpigil ng trafficking. Hindi lang yung outbound, where you've already made some progress in the past years, pero inbound din na tinitignan natin ngayon. I will repeat the question, ma'am. Hindi ba nakakabahala na mag-ama ang nangangasiwa? Sino mang mag-ama yan, it, but it so happens, it's the Marinas father and son. Hindi ba nakakabahala na mag-ama ay nangangasiwa nagre-review sa review assessment preparation ng VUA? Alam ko, decision po ito ng dating SOJ, pero good policy ba yan? Kasi parang may problema talaga sa check and balance. Is that a good policy, attorney? Thank you, Madam Chair. Your Honor, there are several policies in place in government wherein um, we made sure that uh, conflict of interest are avoided and that um, there's, for instance, uh, the rule on, against nepotism. So um, in this instance, I think if there is a way that those two um, offices are not in any way will be um, influencing another, then there's no conflict of interest in that instance. But in, in the bigger scale of, in terms of matter of delicadeza, there might be some instances wherein it's not a good practice or it's, it doesn't look good, especially in government wherein we try to give that impression that there's presumption of regularity at all times. Your Honor. I completely agree, Attorney, and thank you for uh, making that off record. Uh, now, Mr. Marinas, I will allow you to deliver your 10-minute statement to the committee. Please proceed. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chairperson and members of the committee, uh, distinguished uh, senator, and fellow resource persons. Ako po si Mark Red Marinas, uh, 44 years old. I started my career at the Bureau of Immigration in 2003 as clerk two. In 2009, I was promoted to immigration officer two, assigned at the different terminals of NAIA in, two, uh, NAIA. in 2014. I was again promoted as the Bureau's District Chief for the province of La Union and Ilocos Sur. I was posted in these two provinces until I was designated as Acting Chief of the Port Operations Division in July 2016 and in April of 2018 as OIC Deputy Commissioner in the Bureau of Immigration. These two positions I held until my resignation in October of 2018 to, to pursue another venue or avenue in public service. I'm thankful to be given this opportunity to shed some light in this Pastilla scheme, alleged to be a modus in a very massive scale by which immigration officers extort money from predominantly Chinese tourists. If you please, Your Honor, allow me to go straight to the point and address the video that was presented by Mr. Alison Chong. A video which Mr. Chong admitted, admitted he himself recorded. Ito pong video na ito was clearly taken with malice with the intention of making it appear that VIP treatment is being accorded Chinese nationals in exchange for money. Ito pong video na ito ay produced, directed by, and starring role na rin po si Mr. Chong where an ordinary, innocent standard procedure in the course of primary inspection of uh, arriving passengers was twisted to suit his intention of passing it to the committee as evidence of corruption. Hindi po ganito ang nangyayari at hindi po ito ginagawa ng ating mga immigration officers. We have procedures in place which our frontliners adhere to. But Mr. Chong's personal records will show that in the past, he was found guilty of an administrative offense and was suspended for three months for not following the set procedures. It is for this reason that I'm requesting, and if you please, Your Honor, I hope the committee would later allow the showing of the video again so I could explain this further. The BI Commissioner, Commissioner Morente, in his statement before this committee during the last session, said that he is aware of some irregularities happening for some time. I too became aware of this when I assumed office as acting POD chief in 2016. During my first four months, we tracked down, took action, st and started dismantling this kind of operation. We transferred and reassigned some quite a number of immigration officers to different postings. We could have continued doing so, but towards the first quarter of 2017, the government removed the augmentation pay of immigration officers. This resulted in a crisis in the Bureau as we were deluged with resignations and leaves. About 100 immigration officers resigned and some went on leave. Long queues of passengers at our airports, both in the arrival and departure areas, were shown daily in the media. Hence, the efforts of cleansing our own ranks had to take a second place and instead priority was given to continue serving our passengers. We could not afford to do a reassignment or reshuffling of our airport personnel at the time as the operations will be paralyzed. We constantly requested for approval of additional organic personnel that we were able to achieve during the second quarter of 2018. By sheer will and dedication of all the immigration officers who stayed on in an almost crippled operation, we were able to do our jobs, surpass this challenge, and serve our travelers and guard our borders. By the way, Mr. Chong, if I remember right, was one of our immigration officers who went on leave for five months during the time of crisis of the institution. Having survived this crisis, the Bureau went back and continued to institute programs 
not only to make the processes more efficient, but also to curb corruption. Hence, we now have the e-gates, which limits the interaction with our immigration officers. Quarterly reshuffling of personnel to also limit familiarization with the workplace and fellow employees. It was, it was also during our leadership when the Philippines was upgraded to Tier 1 status in the Trafficking in Persons Report of July 2016 in accordance with the Trafficking and Violence Protection Act of 2000. Previous to 2016, we were in Tier 2 status for five years. To date, the Philippines still maintains it, its Tier 1 status. Operation Janus, the largest single interception in the history of Bureau of Immigration of about 177 Indonesian nationals using, using fraudulently acquired Philippine passports is another achievement during our time. At present, under the leadership of, of uh, Commissioner Morente, programs and reforms continue to be implemented in the Bureau, resulting to successful raids, arrests, and deportation of unwanted foreigners and illegal POGO operators. Thank you for allowing me to state just a few of our humble achievements. Marami po pa yung mga achievements at kung inyo pong mamarapatin, I can furnish you a copy, Madam Chair. Gusto ko lang humastress na ang mga empleyado po ng Bureau of Immigration ay hindi ho naririyan para magpayaman. Ako daw po ang nag-appoint ng mga heads ng different units at the airport. Your Honor, I have no appointing authority as acting chief of POD. I merely endorse their appointments on the basis of their experience, knowledge of operation, people management skills, and because they have my trust and confidence. Based on the affidavit executed by Mr. Chong, there's no proof of any wrongdoing by these three people I recommended. Lastly, it deeply saddens me that the Bureau of Immigration, the institution which me and my family have faithfully served for more than 70 years without any derogatory mark, was drugged in this mess. The reputation of the tireless and dedicated men and women of the Port of Operations Division has been tarnished and their jobs are in jeopardy. I can only hope that my presence here today can somehow shed light and mitigate the unjustness of these accusations. To Mr. Allison Chong, as we dig deeper in finding out your real motivation, motivation in spewing these lies, bear the thought that you have weakened the very institution that protects our borders by causing untold demoralization among our ranks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marinas. Dalawang punto lang bago uh, may intervention si Sen uh, De La Rosa. The committee takes note, even in previous hearings, dun sa problemang nagsimula nung first quarter 2017, kung kailan tinanggal yung augmentation pay, uh, yung uh, just na augmentation pay ng immigration uh, officers. At posibleng pumasok din ito sa recommendations sa aming committee report in terms of na yung ating mga public sector employees sa buong gobyerno, pati sa Bureau of Immigration, ay dapat uh, karampatan sa serbisyong ibinibigay nila sa ating bayan. And the second point at this point in the hearing tungkol sa trafficking, uh, for one, uh, Attorney Coronel of the IACAT well knows the progress that IACAT has posted in terms of improving our global status in curbing outbound trafficking. Yung kailangan pa nating mas sugpuin ay yung inbound trafficking na nasa puso din itong resolusyon na dinidinig ng aming komite. So before I proceed, uh, Senator De La Rosa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, listening to the statement of uh, former immigration officer Marinas, uh, dito naman kayo, uh, marami man kayo mga taga BI nandito, I just would like to give you a piece of advice. Tayo sa law enforcement, pariho lang tayo, immigration, saka police, kahit ano ulitan niya mo dyan na accomplishment na sinasabi mo, it will only take isang rogue immigration officer or policeman to bring down the whole institution. Kaya nga, kahit na sabi mo, sa polis, tunito nila dang shabu ang nahuhuli, 
but isang polis lang, isang ninja cop lang na mahuli kahit na 5 grams lang na siya po ang nahuli sa kanyang posisyon, sira pa rin ang buong kapulisan. So pareho na rin yan sa inyo, sa immigration. Kahit na ilang libo ang uh, accomplishment niyo dyan ng mga kung ano-ano accomplishments, isang pastillas lang na napiktura ni Mr. Chung, sira na kayong lahat. So dapat mag-ingat tayo sa ating trabaho. The more so na ang ating presidente, ating pangulo ay talagang galit na galit sa korupsyon. Eh kailan pa ba tayo kikilos ng uh, kakabuti sa ating imahe para sana may pagbabago naman uh, before matapos yung term ng ating pangulo. Y yun lang, I am not prejudging you na talagang totoo yung pastilla scheme na yan. Uh, in fact, I suggested to Madam Chair kung pwede yung sinasabi mo na video, pakita natin to sa screen at dito para malaman natin yung pastillas na yan. But uh, yun lang sa akin. Sana mag-ingat tayong lahat. And before, before kababalik, ma Madam Chair, tanungin ko lang sana yung sino bang highest uh, officer ng wala si Commissioner Morente, ikaw, Atty. Tobias, Javier. Uh, how far uh, Gaano ka lawak yung inyong administrative powers over your earring uh, immigration officers? Sa uh, BI level lang, kaya ba nyo disiplinahin yung, yung mga earring personnel pag na, may nahuli kayong gumagawa ng kalukuhan? Mayroon mo kaming board of... Um, thank you, sir, for the question. Mayroon po kaming board of discipline sa Bureau of Immigration, internal... Um, machinery for uh, disciplining our employees for uh, violation administratively. Uh, Gagawa po ito ng investigation in accordance with the due process, procedural due process. Tapos whatever comes out of the investigation po, pinoforward yan sa Department of Justice. May recommendation po yung Board of Discipline whether to dismiss or suspend or ano pa mang sanction ay pwedeng ibigay or impose doon sa erring employee ng immigration po. So, Department of Justice will decide uh, whether to uh, follow the recommendation of the Board of Discipline. Uh, ang Commissioner po, kung sa tingin niya may mayroong uh, probable cause or prima facie case, pwede po siyang i-assign mo na empleyado na maaring nagkasala sa isang Um, pwedeng ibalik doon. Kung galing siyang airport, pwede siyang ilagay sa sa main office. May doon muna siya. I, siguro, i-freeze muna siya sa isang division doon pending investigation. Yan po ang power ng commissioner. Pwede siyang mag-assign by way of uh, personal order. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you, uh, Atty. Javier. Tinatanong ko yan kasi uh, parang it appears na Totoo nga yung sabi mo, lame duck yung commissioner as far as uh, his statement towards his uh, airing uh, uh, immigration officers. Dahil nga, ito, I will give you an example sa PNP. Pareho lang tayo, parang bureau. Bureau kayo ng DOJ, ang PNP, bureau ng DILJ. But the chief PNP has the power to hire and fire its personnel, lalo na yung airing personnel. So, pag nakita niya after due process, nakita niya dapat tanggalin itong polis na ito, tanggal niya kagad. And yet, nandun pa rin yung pang-abuso ng mga kapulisan. How much more sa sitwasyon ninyo sa Bureau of Immigration na you don't have the power to fire dahil nga highly consolidated, centralized doon sa DOJ yung power na yan. So dapat, uh, Madam Chair, I, I think uh, it's uh, from this uh, humble representation, isama natin yan sa committee report na dapat Ibalik, ewan ko kanino ba tinanggal, kanino time yan tinanggal yung power yan during the time of uh, Secretary Aguirre or Secretary Dilema na masyadong uh, concentrated uh, doon sa DOJ lahat ng powers ng uh, mga bureaus niya. Uh, Your Honor, yung disciplining power po talaga 
Um, nasa charter po ng Bureau of Immigration, ah. sa, sa Common, Commonwealth Act 613, which is a uh, very antiquated law way back 1940s. So, ganun po talaga yung uh, um, scheme of things doon sa, sa aming batas sa Bureau of Immigration law. That's why we have pending bills both in the lower house and in the Senate for the modernization of our immigration law, including the proposal to... Uh, Uh, give the commissioner and or the board of commissioners disciplining power over the employees. Thank you. Para ma-follow up natin yan, can you submit to this committee kopya ng uh, bills ninyo na gusto nating uh, palakarin? At uh, sa opisina ko na rin, please give me para tutulong ako dyan to push for that uh, bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. And uh, for the record, sinabi na rin ng komite natin, because Senator De La Rosa is also a member of the Senate Committee on Women and Children, sinabi na po ng komite nung nakaraang hearing na susuportahan namin yung pag-modernize nung batas na nagre-regulate sa Bureau of Immigrations, both in terms of yung powers, yung proper powers vested sa commissioner, at pati di doon or sa uh, appropriate na batas yung tamang uh, compensation sa mga uh, immigration officers. Kasabay na rin na uh, Senator De La Rosa nung uh, pagtaas natin halimbawa ng salary grade and therefore compensation sa mga public health sector nurses natin. Uh, I learned na tama po ba uh, salary grade 11 lamang ang ating mga immigration officers. So definitely that is something na concern kaming lahat dito sa Senado na tignan when modernizing uh, the law and the, the Bureau itself. Uh, gusto ko lang pong i-acknowledge yung presensya ngayon ni uh, DOJ USEC Emeline Villar. Uh, welcome and thank you for uh, your return to our hearing. Uh, counterpart ko po, uh, Sen. De La Rosa, si USEC uh, Aglipay Villar, uh, nung sila dati ang chair ng House Committee, Uh, on women and uh, the committee really values yung anti-trafficking work na ginagawa nyo ngayon pati sa IACAT. Um, Mr. Chong, Alex, can you explain the status of your admin case? Your Honor, yung admin case ko po, it was, uh, tama po, si Mr. Red Marinas, it was a one-month suspension over a, if I remember correctly, no, yung balik bayan visa yan eh yung kasi walang proof yung ano dumating yung mag-asawa what actually ang haba eh no dumating briefly na lang please oh, briefly dumating yung mag-asawa if i remember correctly yung Italian husband niya hindi sila magkapareho ng surname so hindi ko binigyan ng balik bayan visa kasi kailangan ma-prove mo na mag-asawa sila eh kasi ano yan eh uh, privilege So, inadmit ko naman into our country giving the 30-day visa. Ngayon, yung mag-asawa pumunta sa main office para lang magpa-amend. Ibig sabihin, kung dala na nila yung, let's say, marriage contract nila, proof of marriage, para lang ma-adjust yung visa ng asawa niya, maging one year. Ngayon, dun sa admin case, hindi ko na po papahabain, wala ngang complaint dun. So, From my point of view, it was mere harassment. Ang sabi ng lawyer ko at that time, one month lang naman, tanggapin mo na lang yan kasi mas marami ka pang makakaaway kapag nilabanan mo pa. So, yun po yun. Pero tama po si Sir Red Marinas, nasuspend po ako, pero one month. And in short, yung admin case mo, walang kinalaman sa pera, walang kinalaman sa bribery. Wala po. Wala po, Your Honor. Alright, salamat. Um, could I turn now uh, quickly to ask uh, Mr. Tulfo, whom I must acknowledge for the record, bravely expose this issue uh, nung ang focus pa lamang ay yung palabas ng bansa for human trafficking. So, first question, uh, Mr. Tulfo, pwede ba kayong mag-comment dun sa statement uh, kanina ni Mr. Red Marinas? Natatawa nga ako eh. Kasi kabaliktaran, yung sinasabi niya na sinabi sa akin ni Mr. Chong. And sir, you published, uh, you posted, no? You posted 
a very interesting photo in social media yes, where you Honor. called Mr. Maynardo Marinas the syndicate godfather and Mr. Mark Red Marinas the syndicate heir. Ano po bang ibig niyong sabihin dito? Mag-ama po sila eh. Ayaw ko kung bakit po uh, wala dito si uh, yung protector nila, si Secretary, former Secretary uh, Aguirre. Si former Sec Aguirre ang protector nila ng mag-amang marinas? Yes, but uh, quoting uh, yung pong sinabi sa akin ni, uh, ni Mr. Chong. And uh, while I have you here uh, before the committee, Mr. Tulfo, sa column yun naman sa February 25, 2020, nitong taon lamang, Opo. sa Manila Times, sabi nyo, may chartered helicopter na ginagamit ang mga taga-BI para iabot sa isang top official ang kanyang share of the loot. At ang probinsya ng top official na ito, sabi nyo, ay six hours away from Manila. Are we Speaking about the same top official here na kababanggit nyo lamang Opo. ngayon. So, sino, sino po yung top official na yon? Si Secretary, uh, former Secretary Aguirre po. So, siya po yung binibigyan ng kanyang share of the loot sa pamamagitan ng chartered helicopter sa probinsya nilang six hours away from Manila. Mulanay uh, town of Mulanay, Quezon Province. Six hours from Manila. Mulanay, Quezon Province. Sa pagkalam niyo po, anong koneksyon nitong top official na ito kina Mr. Marinas? Sinabi ko na po kanina, siya po yung uh, yung protector ng uh, sindikato uh, base po doon sa uh, report sa akin ni Mr. Chong. Thank you, Mr. Tufo. Uh, Mr. Marinas, uh, actually since naipakita na din naman itong photo, Tanungin ko po kayo tungkol sa ibang mga tao no sa sa photo na to. Uh, for one uh, other no do you confirm na chief of staff niyo dati si Mr. Fidel Mendoza? No your honor, he was my staff assistant. Staff assistant niyo si Fidel Mendoza. Uh, kino confirm niyo po ba na si Mr. Mendoza ay may rank na security guard? Yes your honor. So may rank po na security guard, ginawa niyong, sa reports ko, ginawa niyong chief of staff, sabi niyo ngayon, may rank na security guard, ginawa niyong staff assistant. Your Honor, when I was designated acting chief POD, we can check the record that the personal order of Mr. Fidel Mendoza was staff assistant, who assist me in all my documents, in all my meetings, and all my... Um, outside the office meetings at lahat po ng kailangan namin sa opisina. Not as my chief of staff. Pero ang rank nila ay security guard? Yes, Your Honor. So that is confirmed. Uh, at Deputy Commissioner Javier, bakit po ulit tinanggal si Mr. Fidel Mendoza sa airport at nilagay sa main office? Binanggit niyo po kasi iyan nung nakaraang hearing. Mayroon pong pending investigations sometime first quarter po ng 2019. For the record, saan po aktual na naka-assign si Mr. Mendoza sa ngayon? Sa ngayon po sa bagong personal order na nilabas ni Commissioner Morente, nasa administrative division na po siya ngayon. Nasa administrative division. Mr. Marinas, binanggit nyo nga po sa statement nyo kanina, you resigned in 2018 to run as mayor in Muntinglupa. Tama po ba yun? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, can you tell this committee how much you spent in the campaign? I, at this point, Your Honor, I cannot recall, but I submitted my statement of expenditures during the last day with the COMELEC, and it's under oath, Your Honor. Maybe we can request, but... Up, up, this moment, I do not recall the exact figures of how much we spent. Magkano po yung nireport nyo sa SOSE, if you can remember? Hindi ko po matandaan eh kung magkano po ang nilagay namin. That was almost two years ago, Your Honor. So we, yes, the committee will uh, request that information. Magkano po ulit yung sweldo nyo? Ano po yung salary grade nyo? At the time that you left the At the time that I left, Euro. Your Honor, um, 
I have the I had the item of immigration officer two, which has a salary grade of I think sixteen uh thirteen, I think. I, I could not recall your honor. Just one step uh um ahead of uh, immigration officer one. Thirteen one three. Thirteen thousand. Salary grade thirteen. Ah, so, yung 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 ko po. so yung anong Magkano yun? Salary 30? Siguro po mga 24,000. 24. Plus the augmentation pay. Kaya lang nawala naman po noon time namin 2017 up to 2000, uh, third quarter of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Sen. De La Rosa. So with salary grade 13, 24,000 pesos a month plus augmentation until nawala yung augmentation. So, 24,000 a month. Pero nakatakbo kayo bilang mayor. Uh, Mr. Marinas, nagsasubmit ba kayo ng SALEN noon? Yes, Your Honor. Did you submit your SALEN for 2018? Uh, kung kailan kayo nag-resign sa, sa Bureau? Uh, sa tingin ko po, nakapag-submit po ako ng 18 before I left the Bureau. Well, kasi po ayon sa records namin, hindi po kayo nag-submit ng SALEN uh, noong 2014, 2015, 2016, at saka 2018 for the record. And sir, that is a violation of the Code of Conduct for Government Officials, ang hindi po nating pagsumite ng SALEN. Madam Chair, if I may explain, yung Briefly, po aking uh, 2201 file, when I was designated as Chief POD, nawala po ang 201 file ko. Hindi lang po ako nag-iisa. Kung di ko natatandaan ko, dalawa po kami ang kinuha po ang 201 file namin at uh, wala po sa personnel. It's not only my statement of assets and liabilities, but my whole file in the personal uh, um, section of the Bureau of Immigration ay nawala po. In, in the end, uh, investigan? Uh, hindi ko po alam kung ano po ang ginawa nila. Nalaman ko na lang po, wala na po yung aking 201 file. Very mysterious. Paano nangyari yun? Attorney Javier, wala pang investigation na ginawa tungkol dyan? Nawala yung mga files ng opisina nyo? Um, I think at the time, sir, I, I was not yet, uh, I'm not yet Deputy Commissioner. Um... Pero na, uh, uh, um, hearsay lang po kasi narinig ko lang na nawala nga yung uh, may mga nawalang files sa uh, uh, you know sir the position of uh, port operations division the chief uh, is a highly coveted position so uh, possibly pong nangyayari na uh, politika sa loob baka something would happen somewhere yeah, yeah, ang problema eh. Pagka simpleng papel lang yon mawala, hindi natin matugunan. How much more yung corruption na nangyayari sa bureau ninyo? Maliit na papel nga, hindi masikaso. Nawala. Paano yung corruption? Paano mabantayan yun? Pag ganun. Uh, sir, maybe we could ask uh, Griffin. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not laying the blame on you. He used to be a personal division. Kakapasok ka lang. He used to be the chief of personal division. Sino bang personal division? He used to be the chief of personal division. Sir Medina. Maybe yeah. he could say something Please. about it. Please. Yeah. Um, sometime 2016, it happened, and uh, we made a report on that. In fact, um, uh, we, the staff in charge of the 201 file made a report and showed that... Uh, um, some individuals took the 201 files of uh, Mr. Red Marija. I think four others. At the time, it, it was an evaluation stage, and uh, um, uh, I think meron pong perma doon kung sino yung kumuha. May perma? So, matres niyo kung sino? Uh, yes, sir. Nandun po sa files po ng 201 files. Basta, for the record, Mr. Marijas, hindi ikaw nag-utos noon na tanggalin yung record mo doon. Hindi ikaw nag-utos? No, Your ha? Honor. Hindi po. Klaruhin natin. You are under oath, ha? O kami, ha? Sasabihin nung pumirma doon na ikaw nag-utos, pinakuha mo doon yung pinapahugot mo. Klaruhin lang natin. So, for the record, hindi ikaw nag-utos. 
Please, uh, Mr. Medina, bigyan mo itong committee ba na ito ng record kung sino yung kwan para next hearing, Madam Chair, I suggest, patawag natin yun. Bakit ganun? Nawawala yung record sinyo. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator De La Rosa, at uh, gagawin po natin iyan. And, and of course, di ba, lahat tayo na nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno, kahit pa mawala yung 201 file natin, hindi nawawala yung obligasyon natin mag-file ng salin taon-taon. Ordinaryong empleyado nga ng Bureau of Immigration, I'm sure nagpa-file kayo ng salin, lalo na dapat yung mga official natin. And uh, for the record, no, sabi ko nga na there's no data available sa pag-submit ng sal and nyo, Mr. Marinas, for years 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2018. But just looking at year 2017, kung kailan nakapag-file kayo ng sal and yung uh, stated amount ay 5,545,000. Samantalang yung kay Mr. Fidel Mendoza, na to his credit, taon-taon nag-submit ng salen, for that same year, 2017, kung kailan kayo na acting chief POD ay nag-file in the amount of 5.5 million, si Mr. Mendoza na security guard 2 ay nakapag-file ng 9 million, 906,000. Sobrang isa na namang misteryo, bakit ganon, no? mas mataas pang na-file ng isang security guard na sa pagkaalam ko ay chief of staff nyo, sabi nyo ay um, staff assistant, mas mataas pa kesa sa isang uh, acting chief pero, uh, Madam, POD. Ma pero Madam Chair, at least nag-file. At least nag-file. Uh, Kahit na kung siya nag-file yung amount, five years. at least nag-file. Yes. Okay. That's okay. right. Kumpara sa security guard, uh, chief of staff, or staff assistant na nag-file taon-taon for five years. And for the record also, para sa ating komite, uh, yung uh, si Mr. Maynardo Marinas naman, na head ng SOCU, ay hindi rin nag-file uh, ng SAL in years 2017 and 2018. So again, the daig ng isang security guard, chief of staff, or staff assistant. Ang heads ng... POD at ng SOCU na nakuhaan pa ng kapangyarihan ang mismong commissioner um, ng bureau. Mr. Mendoza, nandito kayo di po ba? Mr. Fidel Mendoza, can you confirm po na yung item nyo ay security guard 2? Yes ma'am, yun po ang item ko. At ano po ang salary grade nyo? Uh, salary grade 5 po, ma'am. Salary grade 5? Yes, ma'am. Magkano po uh, taon, este, magkano buwan-buwan po ang SG5 na sweldo? Uh, 11,000 po, pero meron nga po kami dating augmentation pay, so pareho, pareho lang po kasi yung augmentation pay. No. So, more or less, 11,000 plus, plus augmentation? Mga 20 po, ganyan. So, 20, opo, opo. isang buwan? Opo. Thank you. Total of 20,000 a month. 30, 31, 30, 30, sorry. So, yung 11K na sweldo ng salary grade 5 plus, plus yung dating augmentation ng 20K. Yes, so, th mga 31,000 a month. Okay, po. okay. Ano po yung trabaho nyo uh, bago kayo pumasok sa bureau? Galing po ako ng job. Siman po muna ako, Your Honor. Uh, four years po akong nagbarko. Then, nag po ako for 10 years. So, umuwi po ako 2003 from Japan. So, doon po ako nagtrabaho ng matagal sa Japan. So, para lang uh, klaruhin na natin, no? Okay. Yung item nyo ay security guard 2, pero ginawa kayong chief of staff ni Mr. Marinas, tama po ba yun? Uh, staff po niya ako nung pagpasok po niya nung 2016, magkasabay po yung PO namin. Sinabihan niya po ako na kasama niya ako. Eh, nagpapasalamat po ako dahil as yung item ko nga po, as security guard, eh, pinagkakatiwalaan nila. So, yung sa akin po ay eh, designation, hindi ko naman po, basta lumalabas na lang po yung mga order na mayroon po kasama po, yun po yung ano ko po, eh, hindi ko naman po pwedeng uh, tanggihan nyo, kundi pasalamatan na lang po yung mga nagbigay sa akin ng ganong pagkakataon. Kahit po sinasabi nila na ang item ko ay isa sa mga mabababa sa bureau. So, salamat po at ako'y pinagbigyan nila ng ganong pagkakataon. 
Ginawa nga po ba kayong chief of staff ni Mr. Marinas? Hindi po. So ano po yung naging position nyo sa kanila? Staff nyo po ako. Lahat po nung minomonitor ko po yung mga staff niya sa, namin sa POD. Plus yung mga meetings po niya, pinapa-remind ko po sa kanya. Tapos kasama niya po ako sa mga meetings. Uh, Pero sabi po ni Mr. Chong, kayo ang kanang kamay ni Mr. Marinas. Tama eh, po ba iyon? Hindi ko po masabi na kanang kamay, basta lagi, kasi po, malaki po siguro ang tiwala niya sa akin. Kaya, pag may mga gano'n po, kasama niya po ako lagi kung uh, saan po yung mga meetings niya. Sige na, hindi na kanang kamay, hindi kaliwang kamay, basta katiwala. Katiwala po, ah, gano'n po. You are a uh, trusted man, yes, trusted guy yes, of yes, uh, yes, no. Fred Marinas. Opo. Thank you. Thank you, Senda La Rosa. So, SG5, Mr. Mendoza, security guard, Pero 7.8 million ang net worth nyo? Uh, meron po akong construction na uh, may part-time po ako na nag, uh, ano po ako, nagsasubcon po ako sa mga kaibigan ko na mga mga general contractor. So yun po ang in, uh, uh, source of ano, income po, ko po sa labas. So kaya po siguro may konting ipon. Dumating po po te, Pat, pati po ako from Japan, mayroon naman po akong konting na ipon. So, yung po yung pinag-umpisa ko sa construction business ko. At ano po ang uh, role nyo sa Pastillas Operations? Ay, hindi ko po alam yung Pastillas. Kaya katulad po na nabanggit nila kanina, ngayon, nung la, last year ko lang po nalaman na may mas, Pastillas po pala. Last year, 2019 nyo lang po nalaman ito? Hindi, last year po. Nung pong nakaraan, nung last po year. nalaman yung pastillas na sinasabi nila. So, the committee will uh, recommend a lifestyle check on uh, BI officials. Kaya Mr. Chevy Chase Nanyong, kayo po ba yung nasa video na ipinakita namin uh, dito sa mga nakaraang hearing? Uh, good morning po. Oo po, ako po yung nasa video. Ano po yung designation nyo nung pecha nung video na iyon na June 2019? Uh, na designated po akong as member ng Travel Control and Enforcement Unit. TCEU po. Anong ginagawa nyo uh, exactly? Actually, kayo yung gusto ko po sanang magkwento uh, sa komite. Anong ginagawa nyo uh, batay sa designation nyo sa TCEU? Pwede nyo ba kaming i-walk through? Ano yung totoong regular na protocol sa TCEU? Okay. Uh, Na-assign po ako ng TCEU. Ang trabaho po ng TCEU na uh, verify ng purpose of travel and travel documents ng mga passengers na nire-refer ng primary inspectors. Na-assign po secondary. So, ayun po. Uh, isa, gumagamit din po kami mga gamit, tools, gadgets para sa pagkakontak po ng aming uh, trabaho. mga computers, laptops, mga palilip, yun po yung ginagamit po namin. Anong ginagawa nyo sa video mismo? Uh, gaya rin ng uh, ni-request ni Sendel La Rosa, ipalalabas namin a third and hopefully last time. So sa video na ito, inaayos lang no, na maipakita namin ulit yung video na iyan. Uh, ano yung ginagawa nyo sa video na iyan? Uh, yun sa video po, nagkakandak po kami ng secondary inspection. At para sa... Yes, Senda La Rosa. At para sa secondary inspection, meron kayong hawak na prior list na pinadala sa inyo. Ayun, uh, Mr. Nanyong, i-walkthrough nyo kami. Anong nangyayari dito? Anong ginagawa nyo dito? Ayan po, sa video na po yan, uh, nag-refer po ang primary inspector, si Officer Chong. Dinala niya po yung pasahero dun sa amin. Ang secondary inspector po, uh, binibigyan po kami ng power mag-decide kung hindi ma-decide ng primary inspector yung uh, pasahero kung sila po ay uh, karapat dapat makapasok sa bansa. Tinitigan po nila kung valid po yung passport, visa, and may return ticket. Hindi po nila matisyon yun within 45 seconds. May 45 seconds lang po silang gawin yun. Kami po yun nag-check. Yun po yun. 
ano yung hindi madesisyon na ng primary inspection dito na kailangan dalhin sa inyo sa backroom, sa secondary inspection. Tsaka ano yung listahan na yun? Prior sent listahan ng mga pasahero na dun chinecheck against yung papasok. Yung listahan po na sinasabi ni Officer Chong, uh, hindi ko po ma exactly maalala ko ano po yun kasi iba-iba pong listahan ang hawak po ng isang TCO member. Meron pong listahan na tour groups, meron pong listahan na VUA, meron pong listahan na mga delegates uh, galing sa iba-iba sa iba-iba embassy uh, at mga alert list po din po galing po sa iba-ibang interagency. So, san, sino nagbigay sa inyo ng mga listahan ng mga pangalan? San galing yon? Yung sa tour groups po, meron po kasing tour leader na may hawak po ng listahan pag dumarating. Isa lang po ang listahan po. E nun, uh, binibigay po sa amin ng isang tour leader yung listahan. Yung sa mga alert list lang po, galing po sa amin yung mga superior. Po. Ano yung mga conversation nyo dyan na huwag kayong titingin sa cellphone nyo? May nagmamanman, dinadaga-daga tayo. Ano yun? Uh, Your Honor, yung sinabi ko po na uh, wag tumingin sa cellphone kasi meron po kaming office memo na wag po. Uh, nakatimbre na na Chinese passengers na nakapagbayad na para makapasok sa bansa natin nang hindi dumadaan sa masusing inspeksyon at parang uh, yun nga, madulas. Ah, so yung secondary inspection at least dito sa backroom na ito hindi siya dahil hindi makadesisyon yung sa yung primary inspector siya ay para i-confirm na talagang nasa nakatimbreng listahan ng mga incoming Chinese tourists. Yes, your honor. Kami pong mga primary inspector, no? Ah uh, Malalaman naman namin yan sa primary inspection kung uh, yung particular pasahero na yan, tulad yan is uh, public charge nga yan, magpo-fall siya under section 29A5. So may basis po yan sa, sa batas. Ibig sabihin, i-refer namin yan, bakit public charge? Kasi baka nga, most probably magtatrabaho yan dito. At pag tinignan nila yung, yung findings yan, sigurado nga, na worker yan dito either sa Pogo or sa construction. Kaya nga may listahan. Kasi pag may listahan, hindi na yan tatanungin. De diretso na tatatakan yan. Bakit nandun sa loob yung listahan? Dahil nga, at that particular point in time, kumalat yung NBI sa airport nagmamanman. May, may, may additional instruction pa nga dyan eh. Ang sabi, Tatakan nyo na lang. Kasi pag masyadong maraming nire-refer dun sa loob, pinapasok dun sa holding area, tapos marami rin lumalabas, ang tawag dyan, lulutang, makikita nga, makakalata ng mga NBI agents nung time na yun. Kaya nga po ako kumuha ng spy pen at that point in time kasi andun sa loob, talagang ma maipapakita ko talaga kung paano nangyayari yung modus. Yun yun. So yan yung panahon na ongoing yung NBI investigation na naspur ng internal BI investigation. Yun po, Your Honor, yung uh, inexpose po namin ni uh, Sir Mon Tulfo, yeah, nagka-response naman po yung uh, gobyerno natin. Kaya lang hindi talaga siya, hindi talaga siya ma mapasok eh, sa loob. Kasi nag evolve talaga yung operations ng sindikato eh. And by the way, no, Alex, uh, 2020 ngayon, so by 2020 ba ngayon, mayroon pa ring Viber list sa phone? Sabi kasi ni Mr. Nanyong na bawal na tumingin ng phone. So mayroon pa ring bang Viber list ngayon? Mayroon po, Your Honor. At saka, kaka, ano ko lang, ito. February yan, ha? pagkatapos nung ban, mayroon pa ring mga pumapasok. Pero... Ngayon, ano naman, mga Vietnamese, mga ano to, Myanmar. So, tuloy-tuloy yan. Tapos, pag mas na niyang maigi, ah, may 12 hours doon sa baba. 
nag-auto-delete yan yung mga chat na yan para hindi ma-screenshot. Tapos, minsan, uh, pag nag-screenshot ka dyan, lalabas sa lahat na nag-screenshot ka. So, anong ginawa ko? Pumunta ako sa lugar na, like sa CR, dun ko pinipicturan ng isa kong phone. Kaya, ayan po yon yung group na yan. Bago, nung pumapasok pa ako yan, kasi hindi na ako nakapasok after nung na-expose na nga ito. Yan po yung pinaka-latest, February 2020. So, hindi pala tama na bawal ng tumingin ng phone kasi meron pa rin ganito mga list. Yung nasa left side, January 2020, itong nasa gitna at right side, parehong February 2020, may Happy Valentine's Day pa. So, sobrang current, no? Up to the, up to a few days ago. Senda La Rosa. Yes, Madam Chair. Balik lang ako kay Chevy Chase Nanyong. Ba ba bakit dun sa video na yun, parang masyado kayo allergic sa cellphone? Parang takot na takot kayo sa cellphone. Ano bang, bakit, uh, anong rason? Your Honor, meron po kasi kami standing office memo na bawal po talaga mag-cellphone ang primary. Uh, primary? Po, When you say primary, sila po yung mga nasa counter na nakiklear po ng passport. Kasama ninyo? Tao ninyo? Uh, kasama po sa opisina, nasa secondary po ako, sila po yung nasa primary. Yung mga nagtatatak po ng passport. Pero ako ha, regardless about kung anong laman ng memo na yan, about cellphone, pag nakikita ko kung wala kang tinatago, bakit ka matakot sa cellphone? Kung transparent ka, oh, oh, ikaw, ah, halimbawa, napansin mo na si... Mr. Chong, kumukuha ng cellphone doon. Ay, nagbibideo. Uh, Alam mo, nahuli mo, ha? granting, nahuli mo. Alam mo, kung wala akong tinatago, sabi ako, oh, Mr. Chong, ito ko. Oh. oh, gusto ka mag-record? Oh, record mo lahat. I-open ko sa'yo. I will not hide sa anything. Transparent ako, ipakita mo ito. Pero sa nakikita ko sa video, parang takot na takot kayo sa cellphone. Uh, hindi naman po, uh, nire-remind ko lang po sila na bawal po gumamit ng cellphone sa counter. Bawal? Ako ha, regardless, dapat transparent tayo para walang, walang pagdududa ang taong bayan sa ating lahat ng transaksyon na ginawa, ginagawa natin, lalo na kay BI, yun na, iwasan natin yung ganun. Yun lang, Madam Chair. Uh, kahit hindi ako polis, kahit ordinaryong mamamayan ako, kung makita ko yung video na yun, tapos makita ako yung mga nakasulat doon na cellphone-cellphone, para bang mag-isip yung taong bayan na may tinatago itong mga tao na ito. Bakit ayaw ng cellphone? Sige yun lang. Thank you. Thank you, Senda La Rosa. And mukhang sa primary inspection, yung computers ang ginagamit. Doon nag appear yung mga listahan. Sa secondary inspection, ito, dyan ginagamit yung mga cellphone na ito. Moving on po kay kina Mr. Komya. Nasaan po si Mr. Komya? Mr. Komya. Sa huling hearing po namin, uh, nagpalabas nga ako nitong video for the second time, no? kung saan yung isang TCEU employee, si Mr. Nanyo nga, sa Terminal 1, kung saan kayo yung TCEU head, Nag-check ng pangalan ng mga Chino sa isang master list at ang nasa list ay approved for entry sa Pilipinas. Alam niyo po ba na nangyayari yung ganito, Mr. Komya? Hindi po, Your Honor. Hindi niyo alam. Uh, hindi daw alam ng boss mo ang pinagagagawa mo, Mr. Nanyong. Ilalaglag yata kayo ng boss niyo. Your Honor, ang chinecheck po namin list Noong time na yon hindi ko lang po maalala, pero iba-ibang klaseng list po ang nandun. Mga travel, mga uh, tour groups, mga alert list, mga, mga listahan po ng mga delegates ng iba-ibang embassy po. Pero kung ano-ano mang mga listahan chinecheck nyo, kayo lang gumagawa noon, tama ba? You are acting on your own. Hindi po yun. Nanggagaling po sa opisina po yun. Aling opisina yun? Nanggagaling po sa office po. Office po ng superior po namin yung listahan. Sino pong superior nyo? Uh, su supervisor po namin nung time na yun. Sino pong supervisor nyo nung mga time na yun? 
Pero no, hindi ko na po maalala kasi pa iba iba po ng shift ang supervisor. Pero yung pinaka-boss nyo sa lahat sa Terminal 1 TCEU ay si Mr. Komia. That time... Bakit that time? Nagbabago ba ang boss ng TCEU okay. Terminal 1? Na, na, hindi ko po maalala kung narinig na po si Sir Komia nung time na po yung nakuha yung video. So hindi maalala ni Mr. Nan yung ang tungkol sa listahang ito. Can you shed light, Mr. Komia, bilang kayo yung boss ng TCEU sa Terminal 1? Your other, meron nga po mga listahan like uh, delegates, like uh, ASEAN delegates, BUA, and alike. Pero that time, hindi na po ako yung TCEU that time, Your Honor. Tinina na po ng komiteng ito yung VUA earlier dahil yan ang kinasangkapan para sa trafficking ng mga inbound women bound for prostitution. At ngayon tinitignan po namin yung pagkasangkapan sa mga tourist visa natin para sa mga illegal na pogo workers. Uh, Senda La Rosa? Gusto ko lang i-point out, Madam Chair, na eh, nakukumpiyos na tuloy ako. Itong nasa baba, nagsasabi, na-require sa taas. Tapos yung namang nasa taas, sabi, hindi na-require. So, who is who? Ano klaseng organisasyon ito? Kung, ano, uh, I'm, I'm confused. Kung anong klaseng organisasyon nag, sa baba nagsasabi required, sa taas. Ang taas nag-deny. Sige lang. Uh, let the hearing continue, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sen. De La Rosa. Mr. Komia, kinoconfirm niyo po ba na nirelieve kayo sa pwesto niyo nung mid-2019 bilang TCEU head? Opo, Your Honor. Mr. Guevara, nasan po si Mr. Guevara? Kinoconfirm niyo po ba na nirelieve kayo sa posisyon niyo bilang TCEU sa Terminal 2 mid-2019 din? Yes, Your Honor. And last but not the least, Mr. Binsol? Nasan po si Mr. Binsol? Mr. Binsol, kinoconfirm niyo ba na Nirelieve kayo bilang TCEU Terminal 3 Head mid-2019? April 2019, Your Honor. April, so a little earlier. Alex, sina Mr. Skomia, Guevara at Binsol ba ay members ng mga Viber groups na iyon? Specifically po yung Viber group na nasa counters, uh, Wala po sila doon. Meron tayo yung, uh, I think meron sila yung sariling Viber group na na iya Timbre Central ang tawag doon. It could be different no, name. Ando doon yung mga TCEU, pati yung mga head, pati yung mga suppliers ng mga, uh, yung nga, yung mga Chinese. So doon, ang uh, pangalan ni Mr. Glenn Comia dati, GC. Kaya nga sila yung mga nabanggit ko eh. Kasi yung, ito yung mga main suppliers talaga. GC, halimbawa, tapos si Sir uh, Bien Guevara naman, nabanggit siya dahil hindi as a supplier, but because siya may hawak nung Terminal 2. And under din niya yung mga ibang TCEU doon na nagpapatakbo rin nung pastillas operation. Pero hindi ko siya binanggit as supplier. And then si... Uh, Den Bin, si Sir Den Binsol, DB. DB naman siya. Tapos, nag, nag, uh, nung after po nung exposure namin ni Sir Montulfo, yan nga, mas nag-iingat yung, uh, yung sindikato kasi hinahanap nga po kung sino yung, yung nag-feed ng info, sino yung nag-leak. So, nag-iingat sila. Yung GC naging orange. Tapos, yung DB naging XYZ ata yung pangalan. Pero, yan, ganyan po. Part sila ng Viper Group, meron yon. May sinulat akong uh, diagram nun na uh, from that TCEU, Team Vest Central, yun yung mga pinaka-trusted nila eh. So, pinifilter nila para yung mga counter, susunod lang, may Viper Group pa baba, susundin lang ng counter lahat ng mga pangalan na nandun without seeing exactly kung kanino galing yon. Kasi nag-iingat na nga sila eh. After po ma-expose dun sa sa columns and sa Facebook page ni Sir Ramon Tulfo. 
So, yun yung source, yung timbre central na iyan, ang source ng mga listahan na di ma-identify ni Mr. Nan yung kung saan galing. Galing dun sa timbre central. Ayun, since sa uh, TCEU member po, si Mr. Nan yung may access po siya doon. Mr. Komya, uh, member ba kayo niyang Timbre Central or kung ano man ang pangalan niya na ibang Viber Group kesa sa counters? Kayo ba yung GC? Kayo ba si Orange? Sa pagkaalam niyo, bakit po kayo ni-relieve mid-2019? Uh, Your Honor, uh, hindi po ako member ng Viber Group na yun. Uh, wala rin po ako alam sa sinasabi ni Mr. Chong na GC or Orange. Sa pag-alam niyo po, ba't kayo ni-relieve nung mid-2019? Meron na pong ongoing investigation, Your Honor, regarding sa uh, post po ni Mr. Tulfo. We were given show cause order regarding that um, uh, article, Your Honor. At alam niyo rin po na subject din ng investigation yung issue ng mga supplier, supplier ng mga Chino na parang bagay lang ang mga tao. Internal na suppliers, alam nyo na bahagi yun ng investigation? Parang wala pa akong nabasa dun sa show cause order. First time. Mr. Guevara, uh, member po ba kayo nung Timbre Central bilang TCEU sa Terminal 2? Alam nyo ba yung suppliers? Kayo ba? Kayo ba ito? At alam nyo po ba bakit kayo ni-relieve nung mid-2019? Your Honor, uh, I'm not aware of the uh, Viper Group. Uh, I was relieved uh, for the same reason. Uh, there was a pending investigation against us, Your Honor. And Mr. Binsol, kayo ba si DB na naging XYZ? Alam nyo po ba yung member ba kayo ng Timbre Central na nagdi-deal sa mga suppliers? At anong alam nyo yung dahilan sa pag-relieve sa inyo noong May 2019? Your Honor, ngayon ko lang po narinig yan yung sinabi ni Mr. Chong na Viber Group. Uh, Narilive po ako regarding dun sa investigation dahil sa report ni uh, Mr. Tulfo. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Javier, bakit po ba talaga narilive yung uh, tatlo, sina Mr. Scomia, Guevara at Binsol noong early or mid-2019? Um, the Board of Discipline conducted an investigation and the result came out sometime in May 2019. Then, uh, yung result po, in our words, sa uh, Department of Justice, uh, for which reason I think the Department of Justice uh, issued department order requesting the NBI to conduct an investigation. So, pending such investigation, to go deeper into the uh, alleged uh, expose, the, the expose of Mr. Ramon Tulpo, uh, those involved in investigate or those in being investigated were relieved from their uh, from their positions from their post, and they were uh, uh, and the new chief of uh, TCEU was uh, appointed by Commissioner Morente sometime in uh, June 2019. Sino pong new chief ng TCEU noon? Uh, the, the incumbent now is uh, Ma'am Timi Timotea Bariso. And ano po yung naging resulta nung, nung BI investigation nung panahong yun? Kung bakit naghingi pa kayo ng NBI investigation? I, uh, um, Ma'am, this is just based on the record because uh, I was not part of that, uh, uh, the Board of Discipline then. There were uh, the allegation on the alleged human trafficking happening at the NAIA um, was not uh, further investigated by that committee due to the limited time given to them by the Commissioner under the letter of directive under the letter of directive. So they recommended that in view of the sig significant time needed for them for, in order to uh, ferret out the truth in so far as that uh, alleged human trafficking issue is concerned, uh, it, it needs a specialized uh, task force or body to conduct further, further investigation. So that's the recommendation of the Board of Discipline to the Department of Justice, for which reason I think 
the Department of Justice ordered the NBI to conduct in-depth investigation. I'm glad na ginawa yun ng BI kasi yung human trafficking na yan talaga ay isa sa pinakamabigat na krimen laban sa ating mga kababaihan at ating mga bata. Sa pagkaalam niyo po, Deputy Commissioner, nagpapatuloy pa rin yung DOJ investigation na iyon tungkol sa anti-trafficking issues. Opo, ongoing po yun, uh, especially with the involvement of IACAT for outbound uh, passengers. Uh, in so far naman po sa incoming passengers, uh, mayroon namang, kaya nga, eh, importante po yung uh, TCEU, the Travel Control Enforcement Unit sa airport, kasi yan po talaga yung uh, unit in charge to monitor the, uh, the inbound passengers, especially foreigners po na pumapasok dito sa ating bansa. Mr. Comia, pasensya no, you're eating, but if I may interrupt you, saan po kayo inilipat na mula nung nirelieve kayo as TCEU Terminal 1? Si Truna, inilipat kayo sa Anti-Terrorism Unit? Uh, Your Honor, we were ano, um, floating po for a while. Ngayon? Sa ano na po, admin division po, main office, Your Honor. Mr. Guevara, saan po kayo inilipat? Uh, Your Honor, I was transferred to the seaport operation section, Your Honor. And si Mr. Your Honor, yung latest, Minsol. Your Honor, yung latest uh, personal order ko po sa admin division. Kay Mr. Ortanias po, yung overall TCEU head. So, kayo po yung superior ni na Mr. Scomia, Guevara, at Binsol. Nililib din po ba kayo noon? Uh, Madam Chair, yes po. <coughs> Meron bang kahit aling activities ni na Mr. Comia, Guevara, at Binsol na nag-arouse ng suspicions ninyo nung panahong iyon? Uh, wala po, Madam Chair. Napanood niyo po ba yung video ng TC employee na si Mr. Nam Yong na nag-check ng pangalan sa master list? Uh, bilang, no? bilang overall TCEU head, maitanong ko sa inyo, no? in what universe is that acceptable? Uh, wait, ma'am, pakiulit po. Kuali po. Kasi parang alternate universe eh, kung saan pwedeng mangyari yan, na may present na listahan mula sa isang sinasabing uh, central, no? yung timbre central, then pumapasok sa computer ng uh, primary inspectors, ang alam ng secondary inspector ay, well, hindi nila alam, hindi alam ni Mr. Nan yung saan galing yung listahang iyon, pero nandun yung pangalan ng mga pasahero, flight numbers, flight times, at sa mga Viber screenshots, of which we have February 2020, yung iba ay mayroon pang mga photographs. Acceptable ba to? Ma'am, wala po kasi akong <coughs> personal knowledge. Pero yung sinasabi po ni Mr. Nanyong na mayroon po mga list like uh, yung travel group ng visa, yung buka, mayroon po talaga lumalabas nun, ma'am. Mayroon talaga ano po? Mayroon po talaga list ng mga travel group, Yung darating yung isang Chinese, marami sila, tapos isa lang yung visa nilang pinipresent. So yun po, chinecheck po yun eh kung valid po yung mga visas nila. Yes, for sure. Pero kung mga incoming workers papunta sa Pogo Operations o iba pa kung construction na dapat priority ang mga Pilipino manggagawa, sinasabi po yan ng Senate Committee on Labor kay Chair Senator Joel, at lalo na kung itong mga pumapasok, kunyari turista, tourist visa ang hawak, pero dahil nagbayad ng 10,000 pesos pastillas bribe each, eh, hindi na po yan, ano, hindi na po yan ordinaryong uh, listahan. Hindi po ba? Ma'am, just to clarify lang. Uh, ang alam ko po, yung mga Chinese na dumarating na with tourist visa, ma'am, they they, are, they can be converted naman po to working visa. Eh. Dadaan po sa main office to apply for working visa. Dadaan sa labor and everything po. Yes, they can be converted. 
Pero, ang problema, may, may pagsuhol pa sa ating mga ilang mga kawani at ilang mga opisyal sa Bureau na dapat for no monetary consideration na ganyan ay talagang either papapasukin or hindi ang isang totoong turista, hindi yung papunta sa Pogo Operations. And, well, you know this better than me, sir, kasi kayo ay tagaloob ng Bureau. Ang dami pa pong ibang mga ulat na hindi pa nga nadidinig ng komite namin, ni ng ibang mga komite dito sa Senado, na ang dami pang kabit na mga iskema dyan. Once makapasok yung tao, gamit yung isang visa ng ating Republika, pati ang mga ulat na mga mga illegal na operation sa mga passports mismo nila at sa iba pang uh, at sa iba pang mga legal documents natin. Shocking talaga. And I'm sure outside this hearing ay nababalitaan din ng marami kung hindi ng lahat natin. Nakakatawa lang, nakakata, nakakatawa lang na lahat po kayo so far walang personal knowledge pero ang daming screenshot, no, ng mga Viber list merong pang video, tapos kayo pang mga boss ay hindi alam. It's really very, very hard to believe. As I have been saying from the start of these hearings, Mr. Magbuhos, Mr. Albao, Mr. Borja, Mr. Lopez, Mr. Robles, sabi po, saan po si Mr. Magbuhos? Sabi po, kayo po, supplier ng mga Chinese nationals na pumapasok sa Pilipinas. Saan po nyo kinukuha yung mga pangalan ng mga Chino na ito? Ma'am, Ma uh, Your Honor, uh, hindi, ho, hindi ho ako supplier ng anumang uh, Chinese. Yes, and De La Rosa. So, so anong sinusupply mo? <laughs> yung list, hindi ko nagsusupply ng list? Nang list, hindi ho. Hindi, hindi ho. po, hindi wala rin. Ho, wala ho akong sinusupply. Hindi ko alam yan. Actually, interesting na maitanong nyo, Sen. De La Rosa, anong sinusupply. Kasi dati, ibang nationality naman ang binibiktima. Yeah. Salamat, Sen. De La Rosa. Mr. Albao, saan po nyo kinukuha, nasan si Mr. Albao? Saan po nyo kinukuha yung listahan ng mga pangalan ng mga Chinese na sinusupply? Um, um, like what uh, Mr. Magbuha said, wala po akong list or sinusupply na Chinese. Mr. Borja? Nandito ba si Mr. Borja? Ah, wala sila. Mr. Lopez? So, kayo po, saan nyo kinukuha yung mga pangalan ng mga Chino? Uh, wala rin po, Madam Chair. And Mr. Robles, saan po niyo kinukuha yung mga pangalan ng mga Chino? Your Honor, wala po kong kinukunan. Pero pag, pag minsan ho, siguro may mga complaints na naho-hold. May mga complaints, especially yung uh, uh, airlines, yung uh, embassies. No? Na minsan delegation nila naho-hold doon. Nire-reklamo nila yung mga naho-hold ng mga nasa ganito mga listahan ng mga Chino. And to be specific, listahan ng mga Chino na iniimbestiga namin ngayon na ang dala ay tourist visa lamang pero dahil nagbayad sila ng tig 10,000 pesos na pastillas bribe ay pinapapasok sila, no questions asked. Ganun po? Uh, I don't know about the list, no? pero yun yung uh, I'm, I'm talking about my my personal uh, experience to that na marami nagko-complain about the arbitrary exclusion. And in fact, can I submit my letter to Mr. Marinas dated uh, March 31, 2017 about the arbitrary exclusion. And this is based on the complaint by uh, the Chinese Embassy about the exclusion. Yes, Mr. Robles, please submit that letter to the committee. Salamat. Uh, tignan namin kung kaugnay ba o iba pang issue iyan. And for the record, dahil binanggit nyo yung Chinese Embassy, sumulat ako 
sa Embassy of China, sa Ambassador, uh, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, na humihingi ng kahit anong impormasyon nila o suporta sa uh, ongoing investigation ng komite namin. And as of today, and as of uh, this noon, Unfortunately, wala pang uh, reply mula sa uh, ambassador o sa embassy ng China. So, uh, Alex, um, dinideny po ng apat na tinanong ko na na alam nila itong mga pangalan na kinukuha na mga sinosupply ng mga Chinese nationals. How sure are you na itong mga individual na ito ay suppliers talaga ng mga pangalan ng mga Chino. I am 100% sure based on personal knowledge. Ganito po kasi yan, Your Honor. Kami pong mga nasa front lines, itong mga foot soldiers, gaya nga po nung sinabi ko kanina, nung nag-evolve na yung sindikato, meron yang uh, listahan lang para sa frontline. Naka-filter yun. Ano, yung mas detailed na listahan, nandun nga sa TCEU, yung central nila. That is why pinangalanan yung mga may hawak ng mga Viber groups, yung mga admin. Kasi sila mismo yung nagtatransact with the bosses. Kasi kami mismo ano eh, hindi, wala kaming direct contact sa kanila eh. Kahit ako, wala akong direct contact. For example, kaya Sir Dennis Robles, di ba? Pero, alam yan ang lahat, lalo na, bibigyan po kayo ng particular example. Merong mga Chinese passengers na hold yan dun sa TCEO area na pinakita po sa ating video. Pag wala sa listahan, adi ano mangyayari doon sa pasaherong yon? Hindi ba dapat i-exclude? Ang nangyayari, paghihintayin mo na yung pasahero doon sa loob, maghihintayan ng attorney. May tatawag ngayon, isa sa mga boss. Ika nga, yan sila. Kaya kung po sila pinangalanan, sila yung mga boss. Sa lalapit yung TCEU, sasabihin, oh, okay na to. Eh, siyempre, magtatanong yung officer sa harapan, oh, bakit tatatakan yan? Wala yan sa listahan. Kay boss, ano to? D hindi, DR eh. Hindi, ano? Uh, TM eh. Ganon. So, code name lang. Ano, magkano yung uh, bayad doon sa tubo system? Sa pagkaalam ko, 10,000 yon. Iba yon, Iba yung bayad doon sa tubo. So, Uh, estimate ko, wala na lang na exclude eh. Recently, walang na exclude dyan. Lahat yan, tubos. Sulit. Sulit lahat ng pasahero dyan. Yun po, Your Honor. Ang link po natin ha, from down sa mga counter, TCEU, or yung mga Viber Admin. Ito po, meron yan. May... May mga ledger yan, may listahan yan sa mga laptop nila, sa mga cellphones nila. Andiyan dyan yan. Sila rin ang tumatanggap ng pera sa kanila. Sila rin yung mga bagman. Kama kamakailan ko nga lang nalaman, ang, ang term pala sa bagman, encargado. Yung nakita natin doon sa listahan, nagtatanong ko, ano ba yung encargado? Yun pala bagman. Yan po yan. Uh, sila po yung link. Iyon po, Your Honor. Yung ilang binanggit mong initials ng mga suppliers, TM, Totoy Magbuhos yon, DR, Dennis Robles yon. Yes, Your Honor. Na ipinapakiusap yung mga wala sa listahan para hindi ma-exclude. Yes, Your Honor. At the same time, yung, uh, yung listahan no, ng mga Chinese, nung hindi pa, hindi pa siya filtered sa TCEU, ando dun din yung mga yung mga initials nila, yung mga pangalan. Ibig sabihin alam na, halimbawa, may isang pong pasahero, o oh, galing to kay DR, Dennis Robles. Ganon. So, ano po kasi yan eh? Yung sinasabi kong uh, Team Bre Central, parang melting pot yun. Kasi parang ang palengke na yung airport eh. 
ano yan eh, competition yan eh, marami yan. So, meron sila kailangan central para dun ilalagay lahat. And then, pag pinasa yun dun sa mga frontline officers, naka-alphabetical order na yun. Kahit nga wala ng fl flight number na lang eh. Ah, so, common knowledge po yan sa buong airport. Ayan po ah, iaulitin ko po, ang link dyan, yung TCU members at saka Viber admins. Nasa computer nila at nasa mga laptop at uh, cellphones. Lahat ng data dyan. Kung maghahanap po kayo ng mga, syempre, hindi naman labibidyohan yung mga sarili nila. So, yun po yung pinipinpoint ko. Yun po ang link natin. Yun lang po, Your Honor. Salamat. Yes, Sen. De La Rosa. Madam Chair, I think it's quite prudent on our part to remind both parties dito, both the accused and the accusers, that uh, you are under oath. And the purpose of this committee hearing is to bear it out the truth. And para matulungan kami in aid of legislation, anong gagawin ng committee na ito? Kung sige kayo na tago ng tago ng katotohanan, then baka huwag yung challenge itong committee na ito na maging uh, isang uh, inutil na committee para lang kami dito mga king koy nag hearing, -hearing na walang uh, mararating dahil sa pagtatago nyo sa katotohanan, then the committee will might as well use its power to compel you to tell the truth. So, eh, yan lang. Dapat alam nyo, baka inisi-isi lang nyo ito, deny kayo ng deny, and later on talaga may establish ng committee na ito yung ginagawa nyo kalukuhan, then, mananagot kayo. Again, I'm addressing this both to the accused and the accusers. Sana, sana open tayo. Wala tayo itatago dito. Para naman ito sa kabutihan ng buong bansa, ginagawa natin dito. Anyway, kung sabihin niyo na nangyayari talaga yan, we will address anong dapat babaguhin sa batas, sa mga pulisiya, para hindi na maulit yung ganyang mga kalukuhan. Yung lang purpose ng hearing na ito. Masa huwag lang yung kami gawin dito in hotel, Madam Chair. Yun lang, thank you. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Yun talaga ang, hindi wish, no? pero intention ng komite. Kaya gaya ng sinabi ko sa simula, Maging sino ka man, maging gano'ng ka makapangyarihan, the axe will fall where it will. No? Alang-alang sa mga kababaihan at mga bata. Last question sa ngayon, uh, Alex. Sabi ng mga sinasabi mong suppliers, di daw sila ang nagsusupply ng pangalan. No? So saan nanggagali yung mga pangalan mismo? Uh, again, from the earlier diagrams na ginawa po na pinrovide ko po, we can only surmise na syempre, of course, yung mga passengers nang galing sa China, di ba? May travel agency doon. Tapos yun, yun na mag, may ano yan dito, may, may another travel agency yan or sino mang or contact person, or liaison na kausap nila. O kung hindi ganun, edi sila mismo, kausap nila yung sa China. So, uh, yun po, Your Honor. Ang mga pangalan, syempre, nanggagaling po sa China. Mr. Medina, uh, sinishare ko po yung, in a way, exasperation ni Sen. De La Rosa. No, no? Na-exasperate na rin ako. <laughs> na, uh, parang walang <clears throat> nakakaalam sa anumang wrongdoing na goings on sa loob ng ating bureau. Pero kahit sa unang-unang hearing natin, January 28th, itong taon, sabi nyo, when you came in after Mr. Marinas, Red Marinas, you, quote, instituted the reforms, asked the DOJ to file cases against some individuals, put new people on board to combat or eliminate these kinds of wrongdoings. So, Uh, sino po yung mga taong tinukoy nyo uh, na gumawa nitong mga wrongdoings? At tama po bang i-presume namin sa komite na yung mga taong ito ay sina 
Mr. Scomia, Guevara, Binsol, Magbujos, et al. Kasi nga sila yung nirelieve noong 2019 eh. Tama po bang presumption yun? Yes, the, um, the report, um, the Board of Discipline um, gave uh, shock cause orders and it was submitted to the National Bureau of Investigation, the said names. Um, and uh, the commissioner also uh, acted on uh, some measures that we recommended. Uh, we instituted, uh, the, with the help of the Office of the President and um, um, the Ombudsman, we, integ uh, we uh, introduced the Integrity Management Program. This is not just a show, but it um, utilizes vulnerabilities in, uh, for corruption. Uh, we identified those and then we seek to uh, address this. In fact, uh, Mr. Chong himself was included in one of our trainings in the Asian Development uh, Bank. I think uh, a, a uh, letter directive or personal order was uh, in place of that. Uh, the, the witness uh, maybe could uh, confirm that, that uh, I think sometime April or May, uh, I included him in the, the said list to, to be uh, the integrity core to start a, a fresh. Because uh, even if we, we thought that uh, meron pong mga ganitong uh, um, bagay na nangyayari sa amin, hindi naman po namin dinideny, but we're doing something about it. And we were trying to combat because uh, there, um, it's never too late to turn uh, people good. Um, so, nag-institute po kami, nagtatanggal kami, nag nagkakaroon po ng mga cases despite the limit uh, uh, of the law or doon sa mga powers na given to us. Um, naglalagay po kami ng mga bagong individuals to, to curb graft and corruption. And you, before I... Uh, Give the floor again to Sen. De La Rosa. And ito yung mga pangalan na in-identify nyo na subject of investigation nyo and subject of further investigation ng NBI. Apo. Thank you, Mr. Medina. And hold that thought, no? Kasi meron akong nalaktawan. But before I go back to them, Sen. De La Rosa. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Mr. Medina, yung binanggit mo mga pangalan na recommend ninyo sa DOJ for filing of administrative case, ano nang nangyari sa kaso nila? Um, the, the Board of Discipline um, recommended uh, through the Office of the Commissioner the said names to the uh, Department of Justice. Recommended for what? For uh, investigation. Po. And really, ano na ngayon ang public investigation? Um, I think uh, there's a ongoing NBI investigation on that. At nag, meron na po silang mga hearings, I think. Kasi pag hindi sweep yung investigation dito, although kailangan talaga ng due process, pero dapat mabilis ito. Lalo na ito ngayon, nasa you are in the bad light. At makita ng taong bayan na may tinanggal kayong corrections officers. Kagaya pa ng mga polis na involved sa drugs, pero pinagbabaril. Eh, ayun, at least, ay, may, 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 may nakikita ang aksyon ba? Lalo na yung lumalaban. Lumalaban na involved sa droga, talagang nakipagbarilan, parang ganun. Parang makita ng taong bayan na may aksyon tayo na tanggal. We total agree, ah, uh, Mr. Ch um, kasi kailan po yun? Anong year yung, yung pinabisigan nyo sila? 2019 po. Last year. Last year. <clears throat> wala pang nangyari, wala pa hindi ba tapos? Pero naman po, sir, uh, ang pagkakaalam po namin, ongoing yung mga hearings na ginagawa po ng Department of Justice. At we totally agree po kasi ang ating mga immigration officer, meron pong mga natitira pa hong mabubuti at ma maayos naman. Ano, hindi ko ba sinasabi na masama uh, kayo? Kaya uh, nga, kaya hindi hindi sabi na masama kayo. To finish as well po. Again, sabi mo kayo na, it's never too late to change. Para sa atin ito lahat. Kahit na matanda na tayo, pwede pa rin tayo magbago. Basta ang importante, galing sa kalooban natin, open tayo, open to criticism, open to change, open to reformation. Na parang gaganda yung takbo natin. Hindi, sige tayo, tago ng tago. Eh, bakit ba? Porque nag-enjoy tayo sa ganyang scheme of things, sa ganyang sindikato, pabayaan na lang natin, hahayaan na lang natin na magpapatuloy yan. Uh, mali yun. 
kahit na enjoy tayo. Pero makonsensya tayo kung yung pera na yan na ina-enjoy natin, nakakain ng ating pamilya. Hindi po yung maganda. Again, I'm not prejudging you. Pero kung ganito ang takbo ng hearing, tago kayo ng tago, ayan yung sabihin kung anong totoo, wala ang pupuntahan nito. Supplier, supplier, supplier. Ay, hindi man daw siya supplier. So, Madam Chair, wala tayo pupuntahan nito. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sen. De La Rosa. Oo, it's never too late to change. Pero yung mga taong nakikinabang na at uh, parang slap on the wrist lang, yung mga naunang disiplina na reassign lang, hindi naparusahan under the law, nasa law pa rin ng BI, mahirap silang magbago unless mayroon talagang firm disciplinary action. No? Lalo na yung kasuhan. Kailangan ma-disrupt yung, yung business model nila. Kasi ang BI, hindi naman siya pang negosyo eh. Siya yung inaasahan nating nagbabantay sa borders natin. So, kailangan ma-identify natin yung money trail, hindi lang sa level ng mid and low ranking employees, pero pataas at palabas. Uh, otherwise, hindi talaga, mahirap talagang magbago sila kung pagbabagong loob. Uh, lamang. Kailangan may ano, systemic na, na incentive sa kanila na tigilin yung mga krimen nila, lalo na laban sa ating mga babae at mga bata. So, balikan ko lang. Please hold those thoughts, Mr. Medina. Balikan ko po kayo. Pero, gusto kong tanungin yung mga admins, ng mga Viber group, mga di umanong admin. Saan po si Mr. Ralph Garcia? Yes, Mr. Paul Villanueva? Yes, Mr. Ernest Gabe Estacio, Mr. Danilo Diodor, at si Mr. Fahad Kalika. Yes. Kayo po yung identified admins ng mga Viber groups uh, kung saan yung mga immigration officers natin ay nakukuha yung listahan ng mga pangalan ng mga Chinese nationals papasok sa Pilipinas. Kinoconfirm nyo po ba ito, Mr. Garcia? Kasi andiyan po yung ano eh, andiyan nyo po yung pangalan nyo sa isang Viber chat group screenshot. Kayo po ba si R.G. Garcia Ralph? Hindi po, Your Honor. Ah, sino po yung R.G. Garcia Ralph na napakalapit sa pangalan yung Ralph Garcia na nag-delete ng mga message? At tinagpa ni Gabe. Sino ba si Gabe? Si er ah, Gabe. Ernest Gabe ba ito? Sabi po ni... Gabe or Gabe, nasa MISD lang ako sa arrival care of tag RG Garcia Ralph. Tinag din po yung RG Garcia Ralph ni Chepi. Sino naman si Chepi? Na ang kanyang message ay yung mga sobre nyo po nasa BCIU office endorsed by RG Garcia Ralph. At litrato nung hindi na kasi pastillas, diba? Hindi na nirorolyo inilalagay na sa mukhang legit na brown envelope na parang pasweldo. So, uh, once more, for the record, and I remind you po, you are under oath sa Senado, uh, kinoconfirm nyo po ba na isa kayong admin sa Viber groups na ito? Hindi po, Your Honor. One more time, no? You are under oath, sir. So, sino po yung R.G. Garcia Ralph na yan? Hindi ko po alam, Your Honor. Miss, kayo ba? Sino ba yung nakatag, uh, Alex? Si Ralph Garcia ba yung nakatag na R.G. Garcia Ralph? Tinag ni Ga Gabe or Gabe at tinag ni Chepi? Yes, Your Honor. Kung titignan niyo po yung, uh, naaalala ko pa nga eh. Sorry, medyo, eh, ano. Yung picture ni Ralph Garcia doon sa Viber Group. After nung uh, nagkaroon nga ng exposure, exposure doon sa, with uh, Sir Ramon Tulfo, nagpalit yun, naging Tupac Shakur pa yung pangalan niya. Tignan niyo ngayon, oh, yung picture doon, alam ko po si Tupac Shakur yan eh. 
So dati, R.G. Garcia Ralph, o oh, yan yung pangalan niya, tapos pinalitan po ng Tupac Shakur, yun po yung naging code name niya. Pero yung, yun nga, si Gabe is, Gabe himself, yung Chepay naman, uh, admin din yan, nakalimutan ko po yung pangalan niya, babae yan eh. Apo, yun po your honor. Pero okay. I confirm so, sila po yan. Thank you, Alex. Mr. Garcia, bibigyan ko kayo ng one last chance no? na magsabi ng totoo. Kayo ba, Mr. Ralph Garcia, ang R.G. Garcia Ralph na tinag ni Gabe or Gabe at tinag ni Chepay and later nagpalit ng hindi lang ng code name and or photo ni Tupac Shakur? Please tell the truth for the record. Your Honor, hindi po ako yan, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Paul Villanueva. Kayo po ba ay admin ng Viber Groups na ganito? Uh, uh, hindi po. For the record, hindi po. Uh, hindi po ako nakatanggap ng subpoena, pero nagpunta po ako dito uh, to, clear, uh, to clear my name po. Kasi uh, unfair naman po sa akin na nabanggit ako, pero nasasama ako sa ganitong mga uh, uh, usapin. Yun lang po. Well, uh, yes, before I call Senator De La Rosa. Well, Mr. Villanueva, hindi kayo nakatanggap ng subpina pero dumating kayo. Salamat para doon uh, and the committee will ask you questions. Thank you. Senator De La Rosa. Okay, Ralph Garcia. Alam nyo, yung last hearing sa uh, Bucor, uh, there was uh, yung isang uh, Hindi, hindi lang isa, kundi tatlo, apat yun sila na corrections officer ng BUCOR sa in connection with the GCTA scam uh, for continuously lying to this, to the committee after nung ni-refer namin sa uh, PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group at saka sa MBI ata, lumabas talaga na siya yung katext doon sa cellphone Kaya pinakulong namin dito uh, sa succeeding hearing for continuously lying to, this, to the committee. Posible rin yung mangyari sa iyo kung hindi ka magsabi ng totoo. Kasi, dinay mo. Ngayon, i-refer namin itong kaso na ito sa anti-cybercrime group sa PNP, ma-determine ma ma na iyo talaga yan, then kawawa ka po eh. Ah, pwede kayo pakulong namin dito sa baba. I, I'm not threatening you, pero that is the rules of this committee. Pag ganun ka, kasi you're on the road. Yun sa akin. Very clear man yan, oh, no, no, makita yun, Ralph Garcia. Meron bang ibang Ralph Garcia sa Bureau of Immigration? Your Honor, wala po akong ibang kilalang Ralph Garcia. Siya lang po. Yun lang. Oh, please do not get our goat. Kasi di maganda yung magdat sisinungaling tayo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator De La Rosa. Ang kinoconfirm ko po yung uh, um, mabala na ibinigay ni Senator De La Rosa sa inyo, Mr. Garcia. I will give you one more chance bago matapos yung hearing natin para magsabi ng totoo. And uh, we will uh, as Senator De La Rosa mentioned, we will refer this to the PNP Anti-Crime uh, Division. Yes, we will get to the bottom uh, of this. Salamat, Senator De La Rosa. Mr. Ernest Gabe or Gabe Estacio? Saan po kayo? Yes, sir. Kinoconfirm niyo po ba na admin kayo ng Viber Groups na ito? Uh, no, Your Honor. Sino po yung Gabe or Gabe dyan na nag-message -me at nag-tag paminsan kay R.G. Garcia Ralph? Uh, I have no idea po, Your Honor. Okay. Nga, Senator De La Rosa. Eh, please do not force me to move for uh, your contempt. Huh? Mag-move ako na i-contempt kayo at... Uh, Madi-detain kayo dito sa Senado pag hindi kayo magsabi na totoo. Again, I'm not threatening you. I'm just observing the rules of this uh, committee. 
na inobserve namin, eh, walang pupuntahan ito eh. Puro kay denial. Puro kay deny ng deny. Sige, Madam Chair, please. Uh, tuloy natin. Thank you. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Tapusin ko yung dalawa pang admin ng Viber Group before we move back to Mr. Medina. Pero take heed, no? Yung mga binigyan na ng advice ni Senator De La Rosa na ano yung kapangyarihan ng komiteng ito kapag uh, mukhang harap-harapang hindi nagsasabi ng totoo. Mr. Danilo Diodor, yes sir, kinoconfirm niyo po ba na isa kayong admin ng Viber Groups na ganito? Uh, no, Your Honor. And last but not the least, Mr. Fahad Kalika. Yes, sir. Kinoconfirm niyo po ba na admin kayo ng Viber Group kung saan yung immigration officers nakukuha yung listahan ng pangalan ng Chinese nationals papasok sa Pilipinas? Uh, Your Honor, excuse lang po. Correction lang po sa name ko. Uh, my name po is Abdul Fahad Kalaka. I apologize, Mr. Abdul Fahad Kalaka. At i-correct po namin yung records nitong hearing na ito. So, Mr. Kalaka, kinoconfirm niyo po ba na kayo ay admin ng Viber Groups na ganito? Hindi po, Your Honor. So, lahat po ay nagde-deny. Yes. Uh -oh. uh, I will suspend the hearing momentarily to confer with Senator De La Rosa. Hearing is resumed. Sorry, yung mga kailangan pumunta sa CR, which I think is where you are going, gentlemen. Pero balik po ka agad dahil maraming maraming tanong pa. After conferring with Senator De La Rosa, uh, the chair has decided na patatapusin namin yung investigasyon ng PNP uh, Anti-Cybercrime Division para mapatunayan namin Uh, kung at least yung dalawang pangalan na nag appear na sa screenshot na ito, Ralph Garcia at Ernest Gabe Estacio, ay uh, totoong sila nga, yung mga resource persons na nandito kanina. And then at that hearing, we will give them, the chair will give them one last chance to tell the truth. Kung ang lumabas sa investigasyon ng PNP ay sila pa rin, no? sila nga. May natira ba sa kanilang lima dito? Mr. Villanueva? Ang, ang solong hindi namin si Pina, pero dumating. Ba't ang nagkukonferes yun sa CR ngayon? Ha? Ha? Uh, thank you po. Usap-usap yun sa CR ngayon. Maka makulong tayo dito. <laughs> Mabuti kung nag-uusap, ano? Para maiwasang makulong. Napakasimple, eh. Magsabi lang ng totoo. Para makompleto yung trabahong uh, ginagawa natin dito alang-alang So, hindi lang sa BI, alang-alang sa ating mga babae at bata. Opo. But okay, my last uh, question dun sa uh, kay Mr. Villanueva, no? para sa grupo ng mga identified admins ng Viber Group, sabi ng mga di umanong suppliers, hindi daw sila ang nagsusupply ng mga pangalan. So, sabihin nyo sa akin please at sa komite, saan nang gagaling yung mga pangalan iyon? Uh, well, uh, hindi ko po alam yan, uh, madam. Uh, you can check those uh, kung kasama po ako dyan. And I am sure po at clear po ako na hindi po talaga ako kasama dyan. Kahit pa-investigate ko po. Gayunpaman, saan nang gagaling yung mga pangalang iyon? Uh, hindi, wala po akong personal knowledge po kasi uh, hindi ko po talaga alam. Kung walang personal knowledge, meron bang common knowledge na umiikot dyan sa level ng mga uh, immigration officers or sa loob ng BI, kung saan nang gagaling yung mga pangalang. Kasi hindi naman out of thin air, eh. may mga listahan tayong nakikita sa screenshot ng mga Viber chat group at yung video sa computer. 
So just for once more for the record, alam saan po nanggagaling yung mga pangalan? Uh, pasensya na po, madam. Talaga po, hindi ko po talaga alam kung alin po talaga uh, ang tinutukoy po dyan. Hindi ko po talaga alam. Pasensya na po. Alright. So babalikan po natin yung mga identified admins sa susunod at huling hearing. Uh, backed up by yung findings ng uh, PNP. Balikan ko lang po si Mr. Medina. Um, Pinag-uusapan natin kanina yung mga uh, sinuspend nun, sina Mr. Scomia, Guevara, Binsol, Magbuhos, uh, et al. Uh, kung sinuspend sila noon, ininvestiga ng DI, nirekomenda yung patuloy na investigahan ng NBI. So, hindi totoo yung sinasabi nila ngayon, di ba, na hindi nila alam yung nangyayari. Tama po ba? Um, eh, I think it's going to be unfair because there's due process already. I, setting that aside. Um, but at the time when it was uh, reported, uh, we immediately act on that. Um, to be fair with them, it's going to be an investigation instead of them being fired entirely uh, outright. So... I'm not saying that uh, alam nila yon, hindi nila alam, pero ngayon po sila po ay um, binibigyan ng pagkakataon na sumagot dun sa mga uh, inaakusa sa kanila at that time. At um, we welcome investigations po. At uh, natutulungan po ang aming mga institusyon, lalo ng Bureau of Immigration, ng mga ganitong klaseng na... Uh, um, uh, exposés. And uh, ang hiling ko lang po ay talagang uh, makamove on din po ang bureau kasi po uh, humaharap po ang ating mga immigration officers ngayon sa corona. And then ngayon meron pong ganyan pastillas. We are demoralized. Uh, yung mga immigration officers po natin ay uh, nahihirapan na rin po in terms of po, yung iba po uh, tunay nagkakasakit ng mga na-quarantine na po sa amin. Um, sa ganito pong klaseng uh, investigasyon na kami ay humaharap. Uh, we welcome it. Kami po ay buong tapang na uh, hinaharap itong challenge. Pero ang gusto rin namin ay ma fret po yung katotohanan. Pero, yes, Senator De La Rosa. Yun nga, Madam Chair, I would like to impress this upon the, our uh, uh, resource persons na hindi ibig sabihin na porque insurmountable yung problema na kinakaharap ninyo ngayon dyan sa iyong trabaho, i magbubulag-bulagan na lang itong committee na ito sa corruption na nangyayari dyan. Hindi po yan pwede. Well, we inaamin namin na we are with you in, in your fight against this uh, coronavirus. Kayo ang palagi nasa harap, endangered yung buhay nyo, yung health ninyo. Pero, ilagay natin sa utak na hindi yan pwede maging rason na kalimutan na namin yung pastillas case na ito. Dahil alam ninyo yung taong bayan, believe it or not, kahit na mamatay kayo dyan sa harapan ng sa kakaharap niyo sa coronavirus, hindi rin yan papansin ng taong bayan. Ang nakatatak sa utak ng taong bayan, yung ginawa kalukuhan sa pastillas. Do you agree with me? Ha? Yun ang nandun sa utak ng... Kasi pareho tayo. Sabi lang, ah, normal lang yan sa polis mamatay. Ang operasyon doon sa droga. Yung drug operasyon, trabaho man nila yan, binabayaran man sila dyan. Tinamaan ng bala, namatay, okay lang yan. Tanggap nila yan. Pero pag sinabi na polis, isang ninja cap involved sa droga, hindi normal yan sa polis. Mas abnormal. So, ito po, yung sagot ko sa iyo, Mr. Medina, yes, alam namin, paghihirap ninyo, hihirap ninyo, pero still, we have to dig deeper in this uh, issue. Dahil hindi ito pwede pabayaan, dito pwedeng magbulag-bulagan tayo. Dahil ang taong bayan ay mas, as I've said, 
mas nakafocus sila doon sa maling ginagawa natin kaysa doon sa magandang ginagawa natin as public servant. Yun po ating bantayan. Maraming salamat. Salamat, Sen. De La Rosa. Of course, lahat gustong mag-move on kapag may problema. Pero, gaya ni sinabi ni Sen. De La Rosa, makaka-move on tayo pag in-expose natin yung buong extent ng problema at inayos natin, inilagay natin sa maayos. Na-appreciate ko na sinuspend ng BI yung pag-issue ng mga VUA dahil dyan sa COVID-19 health crisis. And lahat tayo sa gobyerno, we wish na yung ating mga frontliners sa BI ay manatiling malusog at ligtas sa COVID-19. But I think it is much more demoralizing kesa pa sa pagharap sa komite namin kung magpapatuloy yung ganitong klaseng pag-corrupt no? sa ilang mga tiwaling empleyado at opisyal natin na kalaunan nagbubunga ng prostitusyon, trafficking, at kung ano-ano pa sa ating mga kababaihan at bata. So, uh, you know, Hang in there with me. Pasensya, wala kayong choice. Kailangan nyo mag-hang in there habang nagdidinig yung komite namin. But we will come out with the committee report moving forward. No? Making the painful, taking the painful steps now, pero moving forward para maayos ng BI itong malaking problema sa loob, including modernizing the, the BI law and laying accountabilities at pagsingil ng accountabilities na iyan, pati sa paraan ng mga legal na kaso. So, just to go back to Mr. Medina, uh, currently po yung mga taong na reassign sa ibang mga division ng Bureau of Immigration, nasa saan po sila? Nasa admin division po, administrative division. Lahat po nasa admin? Apo. So, wala na po sila sa control ng POD? Wala na po. So, sa kasalukuyan, sino pong in-charge sa TCEU at saka sa BCIU? Um, before, it was the Office of the Commissioner. And then, uh, recently, I think on last week, it was transferred to the Intelligence Division. Alright. Thank you, Mr. Medina, for now. No? Balik po kay Mr. Tulfo. So, sir, our witness, Alex Chong, first came to you last year and presented you with evidence na directly in-implicate si Mr. Red Marinas and several others dun sa tinawag nyo noon na human trafficking scheme sa NAIA. Balikan ko po yung punto nyo kay uh, dating Secretary Aguirre. Aguirre, uh, tanong ko ulit, yung chopper na nagdadala ng pera sa Mulanay, saan nyo po nakuha yung information na iyan? Kay uh, Mr. Chong. So, Tatanungin ko po kayo nung pareho kong tanong kay Mr. Marinas kanina, nagsisinungaling ba si Alex Chong? Hindi. And sa pag-aaral po ninyo sa mga ebidensya na ibinigay ni Mr. Chong sa inyo at sa komiting ito, ano pong comments nyo sa mga statements ng ating uh, ibang mga resource persons ngayong araw? Kung ikukumpara po sa statement ni uh, Mr. Chong, nagsisinungaling po sila. Would you care to elaborate on that, uh, Mr. Tulfo? Bakit nyo nasabing hmm. nagsisinungaling sila kumpara sa testimonya naman ni Mr. Chong? Nakikita naman sa body language. Eh. At saka po, uh, Si Mr. Chong, hindi ko kaya kakilala yan. Last year, uh, if I'm not mistaken, April of last year, may pumunta sa akin na uh, immigration daw. Ay sabi ko, baka may baka problema lang. Kasi yung programa kong isumbong mo kay Tulfo, marami pong pumuntang mga uh, nagsusumbong. Baka, sabo, baka ako ay may problema. Baka yung uh, kamag-anak niya, Uh, kailangan tulungan pero sabi uh, kuya hindi yung uh, hindi nagpapatulong may expose mayroon siyang uh, gustong uh, isiwalat ay pinatuloy ko na agad sa opisina lahat na po he spilled the beans on uh, all his colleagues sa naiya and it was shocking to me lahat po nilahad niya. 
Sabi ko nga, uh, you're risking your life doing this. Sabi niya, kailangan ho eh. Uh, sabi ko, miyembro ka rin ng sindikato. Sabi niya, opo. At saka, if we weigh in, paano ho natin madidiscover sa isa mafia, sa organization ng mafia, mayroong mga squealers. Hindi, ma, hindi malalaman ng government ng US yung doings, uh, yung goings on inside the mafia without uh, without a witness. Yung kasama po. Si uh, Mr. Chong, umamin po na siya ay miyembro ng sindikato. Ay paano, hung, uh, paano mo hindi paniniwalaan yan? Ang sakit pong marinig, no, mafia, na never dapat maka-establish ng foothold sa alinmang bureau or ahensya natin. Sir, kinorroborate niyo po ba yung mga ebidensyang dinala ni Mr. Chong sa inyo noon? May mga dinala po siya mga ebidensya. Isa po yan, yung litrato. In fact, sabi ko, uh, delikado ang uh, kuwan mo rito, Alex. Ilang beses po kami nakikita sa opisina, sa ibang uh, lugar. Sabi nga niya, he feared for his life. Sabi niya, pero gusto kong, uh, sir, gusto kong uh, ma-expose talaga ito kay kasi sabi niya, kawawa ang taong bayan. Kawa kawawa yung bayan natin. Paano po nyo alam nung kinoroborate nyo yung mga ebidensya niya na reliable yung mga yun? Alam mo niya lahat eh. Ang gawing siya, kasi kasama siya sa sindikato eh. Sabi niya eh. Madam Chair. Sen. De La Rosa. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tolbo. Can I ask uh, from Mr. Chong, categorically, yung sinasabi ni Mr. Tolbo, nakasama ka sa sindikato, kasama ka talaga? Yes, Your Honor. So, kung kasama ka, kasali ka rin sa fruits of the crime. Yes, Your Honor. Nakibahagi ka. Yes, Your Honor. So, how much natatanggap mo from uh, your share from the fruits of the crime? Gaya nga po nung uh, sinabi uh, nung uh, previous hearings, okay. pag nasa Terminal 1, estimate po, mga nasa 20,000 weekly yung uh, pastilla share. Tapos pag sa Terminal 3 naman, mga 8,000 weekly. Meron po yun yung previous pa yung pinakalast na, na i-post po natin kanina. Your Honor. Sa Terminal 2, hindi ko po alam dahil hindi po ako na-assign doon. So, how long matagal ka, na, nang matagal na. How long ka tumatanggap noon? Ilang buwan? Taon? Yes, Your Honor. Taon po. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator De La Rosa. And once more for the record, uh, dahil nga, uh, insider testimony ang kay Mr. Chong ay inextendan siya ng Senado through Senate President Tito Soto ng immunity uh, from suit bago pa man siya uh, tinanggap ng DOJ sa Witness Protection uh, Program. Mr. Tufo, pwede niyo ba kaming i-walk through sa, uh, sa post na ito? Uh, particular, ano po yung connect ni dating Sec Aguirre uh, kina Mr. Marinas? Basi po sa sinabi sa akin ni Mr. Chong, siya po yung protector ng sindikato, si uh, Secretary Aguirre, uh, former uh, Justice Secretary Aguirre. Uh, could you explain more? Paano sila naging protector ng mag-aabang Kasi po, Marinas? yung uh, he castrated uh, the powers of uh, Commissioner Morente. Ang power po siya kasi dapat uh, to hire and uh, fire or reassign immigration personnel should be uh, should 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 be laid on the uh, on the uh, responsibility of uh, Mr. Morente, Commissioner Morente. Pero inalis po yung power na yan, kinuha po niya yan. He arrogated onto himself the power to uh, reassign and uh, assign and reassign immigration personnel and appointed the uh, father and son tandem. Hindi po na iba parang, di ba, sabi nga, very obvious, bakit uh, i-assign mo 
ba- bakit uh, yung tatay, uh, yung tatay at saka anak uh, nasa immigration holding uh, key positions? And then yung isang tanong ng komite, uh, Mr. Tulfo. Alex, paano mo nalaman yung involvement ni dating Sek Aguirre? Your Honor, bali, uh, ikikwento ko po sa inyo yung nangyari, no? Uh, when I came to Sir Ramon Tulfo's office, hindi lang naman kami ni Sir Ramon Tulfo na yung biglang may ebidensya, titingnan namin, ganyan. Of course, ano po yan, uh, pinag-aaralan po namin lahat ng mga pinresent ko sa kanya. And uh, this is from my point of view din naman, ano? I'm sure that si Sir Ramon Tulfo, And sir, correct me if I'm wrong, no? May sarili po yung intelligence network. And pinoprotektahan po niya, ak- dahil ako po, lumabas na ako. Kaya kilala niyo na ako ngayon. Si Sir Ramon Tulfo, pinoprotektahan po niyan ang intelligence network niya. That is why uh, nasa shoulder ko lahat ito ngayon. Pero nakorroborate po niya yan. Tulad po nung, uh, bigyan ko lang po kayo ng example, yung helicopter po na kulay yellow, kung mapapakita niyo po dyan, yun po yung pumupunta sa Mulanay, yan. Sa Mulanay, sa Quezon ba yun? Yeah, Quezon uh, Province. Yes, sir. Pasensya na po, Sir Mon, pero na, eh, kinonfirm ko naman po na sila po yan. Yun, kasama po ako. Nag, nag, we were working on that. So it was a long-term process. It, it, it was a journey for, for the both of us. We were working on this. I was a lone wolf in, inside the bureau inside the syndicate. So, example po yung helicopter, may iba pong nag-corroborate dyan. Actually, ako lang po ang nag-confirm na sila nga yan yung nakasakay sa helicopter. Kasi, how would I know na yung mga ganyan nga sa Mulanay, etc. Ma'am, But, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Tulfo. Uh, yung helicopter na yan, uh, nag-check po ako sa Mulanay. Palagi nakikita yan ay mga every month andyan. Nagla-landing. Nagtataka yung mga tao ro sa Mulanay kung bakit naka-helicopter helicopter every month. Which uh, jibes with the the statement of uh, Mr. Chong na may uh, uh, doon naglalagay ng pera. So every month may para every delivery. Month po. Kasi nag-check po ako sa Mulanay, every month, uh, at least twice a month do, na nakikita yun sa yung mga helicopters na nagla-landing. So twice a month pa pala. Thank you, Mr. Tufo. At this point, gusto ko lang tanungin din si uh, Yusek uh, Aguipay Villar because the DOJ Yusek has to uh, go soon. Uh, Yusek, could you please update us uh, on the status of the investigation na hiniling ng Uh, na in-initiate nyo uh, with these uh, current uh, revelations? Actually, uh, Your Honor, it was started after the expose of uh, Mr. Tulfo way back in April last year, 2019. And uh, the IACAT OIC director, executive director then had several meetings with the BI The, the personnel involved, and um, also with the NBI and other IACAT officials in the airport, after which the NBI conducted its own investigation, independent investigation, and it is still ongoing at the moment, given also the recent, the recent um, discoveries. So uh, since then, as reported, the personnel have been reassigned, and the cases referred to us even prior are now being handled by uh, the, were referred to the DOJ and now being investigated as well. So there's an indep- independent investigation at the, at the DOJ level, which hopefully will um, we'll be able to resolve in the near future. And binang, nabanggit nyo, Yusef, na kasama ang IACAT uh, as the Interagency Committee. So may klarong uh, anti-human trafficking na ang gulo yung investigasyon sa ngayon, though it is still ongoing. Yes, Your Honor. 
That's very good to hear you, sir. Uh, maraming salamat uh, sa inyo. Could we show again, please, the photo of the helicopter? Uh, Mr. Marinas, can you confirm this photo of the helicopter? At kayo ba yung isang pasaherong nakasakay dyan? Yes, Your Honor. I confirm that I am one of the passengers in that chopper. And who owns that Bell 429 yellow chopper? Your Honor, it's a commercial chopper which we paid for the gasoline. If I may expound more. Uh, as you expound, Mr. Marinas, please also tell us, ito ba yung parehong chopper uh, na ginagamit nyo uh, twice a month going to Mulanay, per what Mr. Tulfo said? Your Honor, I only rode the chopper once in my life. And that chopper uh, was used uh, when we went to San Narciso, Quezon, not in Mulanay, because we attended the uh, San Narciso Day. We were invited to attend that day, but not in Mulanay. Isang beses lang po ako sumakay dyan, at hindi po ako sumakay kailan pa man ulit. You can check the manifest of the chopper. The owner of that is, I guess it's Air One or Air, Air something. Pero I deny that uh, I've I'm, I'm been traveling to Mulanay twice a month. We can check the manifest. No? It's a commercial chopper. Anybody can rent that chopper. We paid for the gasoline of that chopper because we had to attend quickly uh, to the San Narciso day and we had to go back the following day. But the following day, nagsasakyan na po kami. Malapit po ba or malayo ang San Narciso sa Mulanay? Hindi ko po alam, Your Honor, hindi po ako taga Quezon. Opo, hindi kayo po yung taga Quezon. So yes, we will uh, just check the, as you suggested, no, that we could, the manifest. Um, sayang wala si Commissioner Morente, pero I will continue to ask uh, Deputy Commissioner Javier. Uh, Commissioner Javier, para lang bigyan uh, yung tayong lahat ulit ng broadest perspective about um, Yung, the institution that's at stake here, no? Na, yung, yung Bureau of Immigration, sa usaping ito ng eventually pagprotekta sa ating mga kababaihan at bata. What would you say are the units exercising the widest discretion regarding the entry and exit of foreign nationals from the Philippines? We have the two divisions in charge of uh, border security, Madam Chair. Number one is the airport, which is being handled by our uh, Port Operations Division. And for the seaport, it's being handled by the Seaport Operations Division under the Immigration Regulation Division. So POD and SOD? SOS, under SOS. The IRD. It's a section under the Immigration Regulation Division. Under the IRD. So itong dalawa yung pinaka may, may say, pinaka at, at, at malawak, mal, ma, maluwag ang discretion sa entry at exit ng foreign nationals? Opo. Uh, akala ko sa, sa yes, I, I, I thought you would say TCEU at saka yung BCIU. Uh, we're talking of division, ma'am. Pero yung sa, sa, sa POD, it's the Trouble Control Enforcement Unit, which... Uh, supervises and monitors both the inbound and outbound passengers. And yung BCIU, hindi ba siya isa sa pinaka may wide discretion? In, hindi po, kasi BCIU is just a border control, border ano may, uh, intelligence unit assigned at the airport. Uh, sila pa yung sa front end ng uh, primary inspector, ng primary inspection. Pero the, the final say, whether to exclude or allow the passenger to get in, is the Travel Control Enforcement Unit. Na or isa to, sa pinaka... to get, even to get out for those uh, who want to get out, for Filipinos especially, um, yun po yung mga monitor natin na traffic persons is the TCU na nakaka, uh, nag handle po nun. At saka sa loko yun, sino pong may direct control sa TCU? TCCU right now is under uh, the overall head, uh, Ma'am Timotea Bariso. And uh, it used to be under the office of the commissioner. But now it has been recently, uh, a week ago, I think, it was transferred to the intelligence division headed by uh, uh, Mr. June Manahan here. 
ang pinagtatakahan ko po, uh, Deputy Commissioner, yung uh, sinabi po kasi ni Commissioner Morente nung nakaraang hearing na parang kalakaran na ito sa BI. Pero yung mga taong sangkot, hindi naman nadidismiss, nalilipat lang. Eh, hindi ba pag ganun lang, eh, talagang magiging kalakaran na? Uh, kasi po, uh, yet, we have to, we, we have due process in our country, uh, especially, uh, like in, in this case, uh, for those mentioned by the witness Chong, they were issued the show cause order by the Board of Discipline, and they submitted their answers, vehemently denying all the allegations uh, in the expose Mr. Montulpo on the basis that uh, all the allegations are hearsay. Um, actually, po, uh, I'm also, as you very well know, I'm also in charge of the fact-finding investigation. And we were also given limited time to, to do so. Uh, but we dissected the, the sworn statements of Mr. Alison Chong. And if I, well, some of the statements are very general in nature, uh, all too sweeping. But some allegations uh, uh, are supported by... Uh, uh, evidence like the screenshots of the Bible group, the screenshots of uh, the Chinese nationals uh, be, uh, allegedly being allowed to enter the country. Um, but uh, for example, in paragraph 9 of the sworn statement, it mentions about the Bible uh, group chat in the Bible application and attached to the, well, as evidence supporting the statements in paragraph 9. It's Annex B and the series are screenshots of the Biger group. Uh, binangga po namin yung sworn statement niya. Sa aming, uh, we verified with our records. And uh, we'll try to substantiate kung totoo po yung mga pangalan doon. And lumabas po sa aming, uh, well, this is just a snippets of uh, what we have done so far. Na yung sa pangalan ho nang nakalagay doon na, uh, uh, I think there are uh, around, uh, in the Annex B, around 58 Chinese nationals nakalista po kanina sa nilabas na, na Viber chat. Then meron puro doon na uh, picture din ng dalawang passenger na allegedly arriving, uh, arriving December 27, 2018. Tapos mayroong photograph din po na dalawang tatlong passport of uh, three passengers allegedly arriving on December 22, 2018. And it appears based on our records, the travel and arrival records ng immigration, na nakapasok naman po lahat ito. And they were, they went through the normal immigration process based on our system. Kasi na screenshot naman po sila, na scan yung passport. They went through the facial recognition. They went through the biometrics. Recorded naman po, nandiyan naman yung scan passport nila sa system namin. So, uh, in the in that scheme of things po, it, it, it's likely that they went through the normal immigration process. But as to the question of they were uh, given VIP treatment, yun po yung, ano, yung questionable doon. Pero, uh, lumalabas po na the primary inspectors, lahat po to yung ilang total nito, 63, sa record po ng system namin na the, 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 their passport were scanned and uh, wala namang po derogatory hits. Wala naman silang derogatory hits. So, pinapasok po sila siguro. So, uh, and uh, for lumalabas din po dito na like sa Annex B, they 58 na tao po yun and uh, they entered using a tourist visa. Yung sa dalawang may photograph, they entered also using a tourist visa. At yung sa tatlo po na may passport, uh, visa pan arrival naman yung ginamit. And uh, after uh, lumabas naman po sila lahat, the, uh, except we cannot verify, may, may lima po na nas, nandito pa yung pangalan, but we are still verifying it. But sa 58 po na nakala, nakalagay doon sa Annex B, seven converted into uh, a working visa. And the rest po nakalabas na ng bansa. Except for the five na we are still in the process of verifying kung nandito pa talaga o hindi. Kasi po yung problema, yung date of birth minsan. So uh, binabangga lang po namin sa arrival na nakalagay dun sa group chat.
but they arrived uh, in the uh, 2019 last year. At yung isang inestablish po nung sinabi nyo, uh, Deputy Commissioner, ay yung na nagmamatch yung viber lists at saka yung mga pasaherong entering. Kasi hindi naman po namin sinabing hindi sila binayometrics. So, uh, establish na totoong uh, factual na listahan yun ng mga taong pumasok on those dates. Yes, so, um, that, that thank you, Deputy. It was established in the affirmative. Yes, po. Noong 2018, nagpatulong nga po yung BI sa NBI naman uh, to get to the bottom lalo na ng mga uh, alleged human trafficking cases. So, may reports na po ba ang NBI sa investigasyon na ito? At uh, si Attorney Tovera po ba ang magsasalita ulit sa NBI or who will speak today? Yes, Attorney... Uh, I am uh, good more uh, good afternoon madam chair uh, I am attorney Donggal you ma'am uh, attorney Donggal yes please the, may task. yes may resulta na po ba ito um, um, after the first hearing dito ma'am nung few weeks ago our then caretaker uh, director uh, Midardo de Lemos created immediately created a task force issued an order creating a task force uh, supplementing the original team last year, ma'am, na na-create din. Uh, yung, so bali, yung, mang, yung report, ma'am, nung team last year na nag-investigate regarding sa expose ni Sir Montulpo, sinuplement na po namin ngayon. Kasi yung ibang team members, ma'am, nalipat ng mga division, eh. So, all the investigation are transferred to my task force, ma'am. Ako po yung head at nag-create po kami ng mga ilang, uh, mga more than 10 members dito. At since last week po, uh, nag-convene na po yun at tuloy-tuloy na po investigation natin, ma'am. Uh, we conducted immediately lifestyle checking of the principal players of this pastillas. We actually, ma'am, nag-interview na po kami kay sa ating whistleblower, kay Mr. Allison Chong sa premises ng witness protection last uh, Thursday and Saturday. Tuloy-tuloy po ang pagkuhan natin ng statement kasi napaka-detalyado po ito, ma'am eh. Actually, I was present during the previous hearings. Yung binasa niya po rito, medyo, medyo may ano yun, general eh. Ito pong pagkuhan natin, medyo ano, detalyado na po ito. Uh, together with his counsel, uh, I was personally present during the first uh, session. At nag-request na po kami ng mga uh, documents regarding the Actually, nag, nag, ano po tayo, backward check, no? Five years. The, all the BI officials and employees, five years backward, who was, were assigned to NAIA, pinakuha natin lahat yung uh, PDS, 201 file, SALENS, and their previous as, uh, assignment history. At yun nga po yung uh, ba, uh, lifestyle checking po sa mga principal players, nag, nagsimula na rin po tayo. I'm glad that lifestyle check na rin uh, pala kayo Nag sa NBI. Yun, so may mga reports na po ba both yung lifestyle checks at saka yung general investigation? At pwede bang humingi ng kopya yung komite namin? Yung, yes ma'am. Uh, yung sa previous team po, yung last year na na-create, meron na po silang mga initial report dun sa lifestyle check. I -su Supplement lang po namin yun para mas mapatibay pa. Meron naman po mga initial na uh, nagkakaproblema lang po kami sa tagal mag-reply ng mga offices kagaya ng LTO, uh, LRA, yung record sa mga uh, real properties and so on and so forth, yung mga barrel, ganun. Uh, kasi minsan meron po sa experience namin sa pag-lifestyle check, meron mga empleyado na napakaraming mga pag-aaring barrel, eh mahal po yun. Mga ganong bagay, ma'am. Marami naman pong pinagkukunan ng, ng, ano, ng detail ano? o kaya mga information regarding lifestyle checking. So, uh, bayan niyo po, ma'am, uh, ipapurnish po namin itong committee ninyo as soon as possible ng progress report namin, ma'am. So, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Salamat din, uh, Attorney Donggalio uh, at sa NBI, pati sa continuing participation nyo sa, sa hearing na ito. Malaking tulong po sa aming komite. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Before I move to uh, Department of Tourism, follow-up question lang, uh, Mr. Mendoza? Yes, Mr. Mendoza. Yes, ma'am. And I remind you, you're under oath, no? Kayo po ba? Nakapunta po ba kayo sa... Mula nai at ilang beses? Uh, Naghatid po ba kayo nung mga biyahe ngayon ng pera? 
Ah, hindi po. Hindi ko po alam yan. Uh, kasama po ako doon sa Nasan Narciso. Yun po sinasabi ni Mr. Marinas. Uh, isang beses lang din po ako nakasakay ng chopper. At hindi, na, hindi ko na po ulitin yan dahil mamamatay po ako sa hilo dyan. Ano po? Sa hilo po. Takot po ako sa taas. Alright. Salamat, Mr. Mendoza. Um, for the DOT, Ma'am Montesilio, you said, is it? Uh, Director Montesilio. Sorry, hindi ko Your makita yung, yes. Director Montesilio, um, yung DOT po ang nag a ng tour agencies at tour operators, no po, na, na maaring uh, magsilbi bilang conduit, at least noon, ng visa upon arrival o VUA. Tama po ba yun? That is correct, Your Honor. Paano nyo po pinipili? yung mga tour operators na ia-accredit ng department? Um, the Department of Tourism, uh, meron po tayong standard na checklist physically and of course, meron pa pong ibang um, documents na magpaprove na they are legal, no? like SEC registration, um, the BIR registration, and then um, isa po sa pinaka-importante is ang alam namin na nag exist sila through the of uh, parang physical na inspection ng office because we do not want uh, fly-by-night tour operators. Um, and then, meron din po namang, um, my understanding is, uh, I'm sorry because I am not with uh, standards, but I used to be a regional director, so medyo alam ko po yung uh, pag-process. Uh, um, tinitignan din po yan uh, natin ang kanilang mga, uh, including um, ang kanilang financial uh, capability and uh, I think there is still that uh, special na um, requirement man po with regards to the Chinese naman po na tour operators your honor okay well ma'am gusto ko nung tanungin talaga uh, yung special requirements at tinatanong ko po itong mga tanong dahil reports are rife no na yung mga tour agencies nagre-rake in sila ng mil yung millions of pesos in service fees or convenience fees mula po sa mga Chinese nationals na gustong pumasok sa Pilipinas. So, sa 10,000 na binabayaran ng Chinese nationals, 2,000 pesos daw ang napupunta sa airport operations. Pero hindi pa natin alam yung hatian dun sa 8,000 pesos dahil nga control daw yon ng mga tour agencies. So, paano nyo po sinescreen yung mga tour agencies to identify and hopefully weed out yung ganitong mga agencies na kasabwat sa ganitong mga operations? Um, unfortunately, Your Honor, we would not have any um, kumbaga, um, what's this? Parang guidelines or on paano namin gagawin. No? Because ang atin lang po naman is um, the Department of Tourism encourages tour operators. And these are the tour op when you say tour operators, ito po yung nag uh, tumatanggap po nga ng mga turista, legitimate na tourist po, na bumibili po ng package doon pa man sa country na kung saan sila galing. And um, special, yung pong kung ano ang ginagawa nila on the side, uh, wala po kaming uh, alam po, Your Honor. Okay, but uh, speaking of on the side, meron po akong gustong ipakitang dalawang screenshot shot galing sa WeChat uh, maalala po natin yung WeChat bukod sa Viber ang ginagamit din sa uh, yung pag-prostitute pag ng mga traffic and Filipina women tulad nung 15-year-old na si Karina na nagtestigo nung unang-unang hearing uh, nitong komite sa Pogo-related prostitution. So these are, I'll be showing you uh, sa lahat po na dito, two screenshots from WeChat. Ito po may English translation. Tingnan nyo po ito. Uh, D-list from, ah, sa pangalawa, mayroong D-list from blacklist, may airport release, if barred entry. And ito, itong una, so wow, no? they will even produce a birth certificate for you. And by the way, nasa English translation na, Nung Chinese language communication, yung salitang pastilya. So please lang, ulitin ko, huwag nating te-technicalin na hindi alam ang pastillas. E bakit yung mga 
pati yung mga Chino sa labas nating mga Pilipino, alam nila yung pastillas, no? Nandun na sa communication nila. Um, so, and obviously, these are criminal acts. Manufacturing birth certificates for non-Filipino nationals. Delisting from blacklist. Nung nakaraang hearing, uh, napag-alaman ni Senator Aimee na bukod sa VIPs dyan sa Pastilla Scheme, meron pang VVIPs, very, very important persons. Dahil sila ay may criminal record sa China. And yet, in consideration of more than 10,000 peso special fee, nakakapasok pa rin sila. So, no wonder nakaka-operate yung mga sindikato nila dito. But back to these WeChats, no? so they delist from blacklist, they offer airport release if barred entry. entry. So, wow, no? may, may nag-aarbor ng mga uh, within the powers ng ating BI na i-bar yung entry. So, and tour agencies are advertising these services freely, these criminal, these criminal services. Ano pong gagawin ng Department of Tourism tungkol dito nga? Your Honor, we have a list of DOT accredited uh, enterprises and um, we are willing to uh, work with your committee on checking the DOT accreditation of these uh, tour operators because it is always very possible that they do uh, things on their own. We have a list, we have their complete uh, contact numbers and details as well, Your Honor. Thank you, Director. I welcome that willingness to work with our committee. Tatanggabin po namin yon moving forward, uh, gaya ng sinasabi uh, kanina. And so, we will probably include a, a recommendation uh, inviting the cooperation of the department in, in very specific ways moving forward. Pati pala passport, oh, bibigyan nila. Ino-offer ng Chinese tour agency ang passport uh, ng Republika ng Pilipinas. They offer to process LTO driving license, even using tourist visa. Masyadong useful ang Philippine tourist visa sa mga Chinese tourist uh, na ito. They can open a Philippine bank account, just provide photo of passport, no personal appearance needed at the bank. Parang yung dating kalakaran sa VUA, na again, ilang travel agencies ang nag-o-offer. Parang sila na yung BI. No? And again, no personal appearance. Padadala lang sa kanila ng Chinese tourist yung cover page ng kanilang passport. So thank you to the DOT for, for uh, our initial exchange. I'd like to move to Empire Travel Agency. According, and will that be Ms. Wu or a, it will be Ms. Wu to reply for Empire? Thank you. Uh, according to reports, uh, Empire is the most powerful travel agency and that you hold the majority of Pogo workers uh, entering the Philippines. So these are my questions. Is it true that you process many, if not most, of the visas that Pogo workers uh, entering our country carry upon entry? Ms. Attorney Kala, will you be answering for Ms. Wu? Uh, may I request that the chairman speaks in Tagalog for her better understanding? Certainly. Oh, salamat, Ms. Wu. Okay. Um, ayon sa mga ulat, kayo daw po yung pinakamakapangyarihang travel agency at hawak daw nyo yung karamihan ng mga Pogo workers na pumapasok. So, ito po yung mga tanong ko. Una, totoo po ba na kayo, ang Empire, ang nagpo-process ng marami, kundi man karamihan, ng mga visa na dala ng mga Pogo workers natin papasok sa Pilipinas? Hindi po, totoo yun. So, ilang porsyento lang ng mga uh, visa ng Pogo workers papasok sa Pilipinas ang pinoprocess nyo ng Empire? Ma'am po, kami ang, ano, kami ang meron buwa accreditation, saka BI accreditation, saka DOT accreditation. Pero, wala kami hawak yung Pogo since 1998 until now, hindi kami pogo. Wala po kami may hawak ang pogo, ma'am. So, uh, ano lang klaseng mga uh, Chinese nationals ang pumapasok uh, sa Pilipinas na dumadaan sa empire? Ma'am po, uh, na, halos napasok kami ang, ang, ang Chinese tourists punta dito. May hawak yung buwa visa, saka 
malami sila po apply ni Tiny Visa. Tapos, uh, mga buwad visa namin halos charter fly. Charter fly papunta sa Kalibo and Cebu. Yun po ma'am. At magkano yung service fee na china-charge ng Empire? Actually, actually po ma'am, yung ano, lahat yung clients namin, endos from travel agency from China. Tapos, uh, so naka-set set kami sa partner yung ano, yung price sa pack 3 to 19 packs nasa 5,500 pesos. Pag guru visa, nasa 4,000 pesos. So, parehong, ito yung mga regular na fees na china-charge para sa iba't ibang klasing visas ng Pilipinas. Yun ang po ang buwa visa po. Tanungin ko muna si uh, Alex ulit, no? Uh, Mr. Chong, anong alam mo sa Empire Travel Agency? Based po sa mga... Based on my experience, sa mga VUA... I'm sorry, Alex, to interrupt. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Amy Marcus. Salamat, Senator Amy, for being here. Yes, please proceed, Alex. Uh, ito po. Historically, uh, based sa mga VUA nga na na-process ko, Empire Travel and Tours yung pinaka marami. And... Uh, <laughs> Wala naman pong na-exclude sa VUA kasi eh, galing yan sa main office, sa commissioner's office. So, sinong immigration officer ang siyempre, sinong immigration officer ang magcha-challenge sa power ng nag-issue ng VUA na galing sa commissioner's office because the immigration officers are mere extensions of the power of the commissioner. So, kumbaga, mga galamay lang po kami. Very powerful po ang buwa. Ms. Wu, totoo po ba na may opisina na kayo sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration? Ma'am, hindi totoo po. Uh, kasi, Totoo po ba na meron kayong reputation sa loob ng BI na pagiging generous yung bukas palad? May mga ulat na namimigay daw kayo ng designer bag sa loob ng BI? Ma'am, hindi totoo po. Matanong ko yung ating mga airport officials na nandito ngayon. Kilala niyo po ba ang Empire, particularly si Ms. Leah Wu? Pwede ko bang tanungin si Mr. Ortanyes, head ng TCU? Kilala niyo po ba si Ms. Poo? Uh, madam, hindi po. Mr. Comia, kilala niyo po ba si Mr. Wu? Ms. Wu? Your Honor, hindi po. Mr. Guevara, kilala niyo po ba si Ms. Wu? Ma ma Your Honor, hindi po. And Mr. Binsol, kilala niyo po ba si Ms. Wu? Your Honor, hindi is So, ang overall head ng TCEU at yung TCEU heads sa NAIA Terminals 1, 2, 3, hindi nyo kilala kahit yung pangalan nung sinasabing pinaka-influential na travel agency dito sa Pilipinas at yung head ng travel agency? Pregnant boss. Alex, kilala mo ba si Ms. Wu ng Empire Agency? Ngayon ko lang po siya nakita, pero yung Lia Wu na pangalan, matunog yan sa airport. Parang uh, more on, uh, or sa Empire yan, uh, 
empire yan. So, ganun. Takot. Paano matunog? No reputation. Okay. Uh, particular example po, ha? And, uh, sa pagkakatanda ko, mayroong TCEU member na nag-exclude ng VUA noon. But, I, I could be wrong, ha? Pero, so, pwede nyo, you can look into this. You can, I, I want the people within BI to look into this. In-exclude niya yung VUA, and then, after nun, tinanggal na siya sa TCEU. Kasi nga, in-exclude nga niya yung isang VUA, parang sinampulan ng ganun. And, uh, wala pong nag-exclude ng VUA. Para sa akin, from my uh, experience, mas premium pa yan kaysa dun sa sa tourist visa. Kasi pagdating ng buwa, no questions asked, tatak ka agad yan. And yung uh, mga buwa na ito na sabi mo kalaunan, walang ine-exclude. Uh, uh, sabi nga kanina ni Miss Wu, ay ito yung pinakamaraming uh, hawak ng mga incoming passengers na pinaprocess ng uh, agency nila. So, matunog talaga yung empire. Matunog po talaga. Uh, hindi ko po alam kung ano yung ginagawa ng mga pasahero nila. Basta, buwa. Ganyan, 30 days yan, papasok. Wala naman pong difference yan dun sa tourist visa. Papasok din naman yun. Ang, ang pinaka... Ang pinaka... Uh, nag-distinction talaga niya is hindi, walang na-exclude na buwa. And the committee noted sa isang previous hearing na yung VUA yung naging travel document of choice nung panahong ini-issue pa siya ng BI, travel document of choice nung mga trafficked women, inbound women, destined for prostitution dito sa ating bansa. May, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Atter, ah, Attorney Kahlo. All right, before I move to the PNP, Attorney Kahlo. May I just uh, clarify certain issues? Madam, uh, according to my client, there were several BOA arrivals that were practically excluded. That one point where she complained because a BOA passenger was excluded because there was no reason. Now, if you review the BOA guidelines, a passenger under BOA may be excluded if he arrived on different flights, he, differ he arrived on different dates, and he appears to be in the blacklist. So it's not really accurate that all the BOA passengers of Empire has not been excluded. It may be true that most of them have been allowed entry because they have been pre-checked, pre-cleared, and unless there are reasons for them to be excluded, that's the only one, with the only reason where they're going to be excluded. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Attorney Kalaw. Uh, pag tinapos na po ng komite namin itong mga hearings at ilabas yung committee report, susubukan talaga namin i-trace yung mga kone-koneksyon mula China hanggang dito sa Pilipinas, iba't ibang mga travel agencies doon at dito, yung mga suppliers na mga Chino na parang bagay ang mga tao, yung mga nag-traffic at nagtat-traffic pa rin ng mga babaeng dayuhan papasok dito sa atin, para i-prostitute sila dito sa ating bansa, kasama na ng mga Pilipina. Meron pa silang uh, kasama ng mga kasabwat sa mga travel agencies dito. And unfortunately, yung ilang mga tiwaling kawani at opisyal natin sa BI, dati at ngayon, biktima yung ating mga kababayan. Pati yung mga foreign nationals tulad ni Miss Ivy na inilegally recruit online sa Taiwan, tapos inilegally detained dito, kinonpis ka yung passport, sinexually harass, ang dami-daming um, ipinasok ng mga krimen laban sa mga babae at bata dito sa Pilipinas at the additional cost of corrupting some persons inside and, and above sa Bureau of uh, Immigration. So, ito yung, and uh, Senator Aimee, ito yung susubukan ng komite natin. Uh, we are together in the Committee on Women na i-drawing na money trail 
trail of corruption, trail of crime against women and children na ma para maging basehan ng mga rekomendasyon ng aming komite. Yes, uh, Can I mean? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, point of clarification, uh, do I understand therefore that this is the last hearing on uh, the uh, illegal trafficking for women? This is the second to the last hearing uh, because I think uh, the, the committee will need to call former Secretary Aguirre uh, who was mentioned in the hearing and also para mabigyan ng last chance sina Mr. Garcia at sino si um, Gabe or Gabe? Mr. and Mr. Estacio, yes. To uh, one one more chance, one last chance sa susunod na hearing, magsabi ng totoo dun sa identity ng mga identified Viber chat group administrators once matanggap na ng komite ang findings ng PNP. So, one last hearing early next week, San Aimee. Okay, naintindihan ko po na limitado rin ang scope ng ating uh, committee hearing pagkat ang mga kababaihan na pinapasok ng uh, illegal ang siyang uh, paksa nito. Subalit sa kabila nun, um, pagpaumanhin na ninyo, pero hindi ito tatapos dito. Hindi ito matatapos dito. Kailangan ungkatin itong pastillas at iba pang scam na babalitaan sa ating uh, Immigra Immig Bureau of Immigration. So, malamang uh, mga nganak to ng iba't iba pang mga hearing and there is an ongoing hearing as a matter of fact under the Committee on Labor and Employment regarding POGO workers na mangyari, eh, tutumbukin na naman itong issues na ito. So, um, maghanda na lang po kayo at uh, yun nga, nagdala na rin kayo ng mga abogado dahil uh, napakarami pang uh, katibayan at napakarami pang mga whistleblowers na nagbibigay ng iba't ibang testimonya. Salamat, uh, Sen. Aimee. Um, so, bilang pag uh, so suspend muna, minsan pa, uh, ng hearing natin, bago yung huling hearing at paglabas ng committee report, um, ilang, ilang mga salita, no? Uh, yung mga kababayan natin natatakot. Ako rin natatakot. Kasi nakikita natin sa paligid natin na parang nasa peligro na ang seguridad natin dala nitong poko. Our border control was bought off by Chinese money and no less than our government officials had a hand in that. Mga mag-ama, magkakaibigan, magkakatropa. Napalakas ito sa isang DOJ circular nung panahon po ni dating Sek Aguirre na nagpabilis ng pagpasok ng mga Chinese nationals sa bansa at sa pagpapalakas ng posisyon ng kanyang mga tauhan sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration. Sa Lily Grade 13, around 24,000 monthly, pero nakakatakbong mayor, may net worth na 5 milyong piso, staff assistant o security guard, may net worth na 7 milyong piso, nawawalang sal and mga net worth na hindi katumbas ng salary grade, Hindi na po ito bago. Classic corrupt moves ito. Bistong bisto na pero deny pa. Magmama ang maangan pa. I know that some of you are covering for each other right now. Nakakagalit na may excuses pa kayo na hiding behind technicalities pero tama na ang mga palusot nyo. Yung mga nagpapalusot lang, tama na yan. Wala kayong niloloko. Video na yan, may Viber, screenshots pa. Hindi ang mga yan nagsisinungaling, ang mga video at mga shots. May he said, he said, pero mas paniniwalaan ko ang may ebidensya. At yun ito may testigo na naglalagay ng sarili niya sa panganib. Nakailang banggit din ang pangalan ni dating Sek Aguirre ngayong araw. Ano ang kanyang pananagutan kung mayroon? At ano ang extent? nang nalalaman tungkol dito sa pastillas scam. 
I, and I'm not alone, want to know his involvement in all this. Papatawag natin si dating Sek Aguirre sa susunod na hearing para magpaliwanag. Pero, ang mas nakakadismaya dito ay alam na nila ang modus na ito last year pa, pero ang mga sangkot ay nilipat-lipat lang at hindi naman talaga tinanggal sa pwesto. Ongoing theme ang pag-recycle ng mga opisyal at hindi napapanagot sa batas. Talagang may kapit itong mga opisyal. Ilang mga opisyal ng BI na ito, kumita ng milyon-milyon. At ano ang epekto? Paglago ng mga prostitution ring sa bansa, catering to Chinese nationals, kaliwat ka ng human trafficking at labor violations. Napagalaman ng Senate Committee on Labor kay Chair Senator Jewel. Pagkakaroon ng real estate bubble, kidnapping, money laundering, aalamin ng blue ribbon sa ilalim ni Senator Dick, at kamakailan lang, assassination sa ating pampublikong lugar. Like many, if not most of you, I want to reform the BI. Like the Bureau of Immigration is sworn to do, I want to protect our borders. I want the Filipinos, we in the committee want the Filipinos to feel secure na hindi nakapapasok ang mga criminal elements na nambibiktima ng mga kababaihan at nambibiktima ng mga bata. Dahil sa mga reports na ginagamit ang Togo, bilang channel ng mga Chinese spies at sa iba't iba pang krimen na dala nito, di ko maintindihan kung bakit di pa sinuspend ang operation nito sa bansa. Togo is a threat to our national security. Togo is a threat to our women. Togo is a threat to our children. This hearing is suspended. 